What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session, and today we have a very special guest. Uh, most of us here know you already, Matt, but uh, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Wow, I've had to do an introduction in a long time. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Matt. I'm one of the coaches here for Poker Coaching. Um, been doing this for like 15 years now. Uh, a lot online, a lot of live poker play all different stakes so have kind of experience in everything and uh yeah <laughs> cool hi matt thanks for yeah hey how's it going coming. good to have you all right so let's go ahead and get our first question fired away uh, what are the most important heuristics to use when you're playing online poker man uh, i was looking so what exactly you look at like it's obviously like a pretty broad question but in terms of like it's like heuristics towards what like so I, I think what the question means like what we were trying to mean by the question is like when you are approaching the game from a theoretical standpoint what kind of generalizing shortcuts do you use when playing and which ones do you think are kind of the most important does that make a little more sense? yeah 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 um so like I breathe, like I kind of went through these questions a lot, and I think this is going to kind of apply to a lot of the questions. This answer, and so it will kind of be a theme, maybe. Um, when I'm like playing, I'm not thinking about uh, like sims or anything like that. What I'm doing is like applying different patterns and different like types of things I've learned um, to play the hand the best I can. And so, for example, like um bluffing with like king nine before i bluff with king queen like using different patterns and like th those types of heuristics and applying them the best i can so uh the most important ones uh i think it's more so just like keeping track of your range and so one of the big things that i'm still working on um and consistently work on that a lot of people don't is a lot of people like to work backwards in hands so they get to the river and then they like face this tough decision and they work backwards to try to figure out mm. like what hands make sense versus um it makes it's a lot easier and it makes it it makes it a lot easier if you work as you go so like if you're calling a flop bet just thinking like well i'm calling with all three pairs i have some like naked ace of spades king of spades hands if it's like two spades on the board various gut shots etc and then the turn is you know if it turns a break well it's like okay well all my worst hands are like these one spade hands and gut shots or if the turn is a spade then it's like okay all my one spade hands and flush draws all improved so like keeping track of like what hands improve and what hands don't improve on various cards i think is like really important and helps you keep track of you know what hands do you need to bluff in spots what hands um you check like what hands should be folded first in different spots i think that's like a lot of while i'm playing um a really big focus um in in real time i like that i i like that uh that approach you know it's one of those things like i've never personally put like a lot of thought through th thought to through that lens um yeah i think i think that's pretty stellar yeah, I think that's and it's it's really, really, really hard to retrain your mind if you've been um, so like it's really like when I'm playing live, I really focus on that because it's a lot easier um, playing one table. Um, but in terms of like online, normally you only have like two hands kind of going on. And so uh, sometimes you do have to work backwards, but normally it, like I kind of use that as a if there's spots where I'm just getting completely lost, it's probably a sign like playing too many tables and stuff. So, right. All right. Another question we were kind of wondering, uh, how does your thought process work when you're adjusting like from a GTO solution to like various different like uh, player types? So for um, example, let me show you a sim real quick. Yeah. We pick a simple one. Uh, this is cutoff versus a big blind. Ace ten eight board. Uh, this is our strategy as a big blind facing a five, uh, facing a two big blind bet basically. So, mm -hmm. how do you adjust, for example, against like a guy who's very nitty? 
Um, on the flop, I really don't make many adjustments because like everyone is like, even if the player is really tight, like everyone's just betting range on this flop. It's like, they're like, ace high, I raise on the button or the cutoff or whatever. Like, um, I think like turns and rivers are kind of more so where I make most of my adjustments. Um, the, the flop like ranges are so wide that, um, not sure like how much like actual need for adjustments there are um are you gonna I, go for all the like for example here you you seem to be check raising like top pair based on the value of your kicker are you gonna pick like every okay I, so i was really confused at first there i'm like how are we folding ace jack because blue is normally the fold yeah no, no, <laughs> this no, is no, the no, weirdest no. color scheme ever yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um so i yeah i like to check raise um, I would definitely like be check raising like ace jack for sure, like 100%, probably ace nine as well. And um, the main reason is, is because if the player is really tight, they're not going to barrel the turn enough. And so a lot of these like check raises I still make because people don't put enough money into them on the turn. So against a player like that, like I might like check raise, check turn some with like top pair. Okay. What about the nice seven, seven or an nice six? Um, those ones I'm uh, I normally don't kind of so like I like to like keep things kind of basic while I'm playing and so like my always like my kind of basic rule is like oh I'll check raise like top pair with the kicker above like bottom pair or second pair type of thing so like ace nine is mm -hmm. kind of always my like really easy oh. one and I don't really worry about finding the ace seven or ace six or ace five and stuff in game that much okay um so that's kind of like like so like again like heuristics like i'm just going with ones that are very very um predictable okay. and like easy to apply in game and that i like know well and so like kind of like here like on ace 10 8 it's like ace 9 is always kind of the one that wants to check raise a lot because ace 7 it's a decent chance your kicker is not going to play and the only reason like like the solver's kind of doing that a lot. I think it's just to have more like two pair coverage because you see like a seven, a six, a five, a four, a three all have a little bit. It's just to have like two pair coverage throughout, which isn't really like you're not going to get exploited about that at all. I'm not okay. worried about that. Okay, and then you don't really make uh, like other adjustments. Like you don't check raise more against lose aggressive players, for example. Um. Check raising, I think, has to do a lot more with how they respond to the check raise and how often they three bet the flop versus um, like if they're loose or tight, which kind of sounds like weird, but like being loose or tight can just mean they raise a lot of hands pre-flop or they like a lot of people like population does not three bet the flop very much. Like if you like go to the check raise here, like make it seven and a half, like, like this flop probably doesn't have much three betting on it because it's like an ace high flop, but there's gonna be some like, like when you check raise here, like how many people are four betting ace jack on the flop? Not me. Like almost no one is. Nah. Like almost no, like people are just calling with ace queen and a lot of people just call with ace king. And so it's like, when you check grace here, it's like a lot of your EV becomes from like seeing another card. And so if they're not like four betting those hands, you pretty much always get to see the next card. Okay. So you make most of your adjustments uh, on the turn, basically. Yeah. I, I think the flop is like the street, like it. So let me, let me rephrase this. Like it's easier to make adjustments with ranges when ranges get tighter. It's kind of hard to make adjustments when ranges are really wide. Okay. Is I guess the, the basic part of it. It's, okay. It's really hard to make adjustments when ranges are wide. It's that's when you can like easily make like exploits is like once you get to the river, once you get to the turns when they're like double barreling pretty tight and stuff like that. Like that's when you can make adjustments. But um the flops I play, you know, pretty like even if a player doesn't bluff much, like they still see about the flop a lot and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that makes good sense. Like, uh, I mean, typically, especially in the online landscape, uh, the 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 C bet small in position from the steal facing the blinds, I think is pretty. You could say common knowledge at this point. And yeah, it's like, what are you going to adjust? Like, right? Like, it's just like people are trying to get too like they think they know more than they do in terms of trying to make adjustments in like that type of a a frame i think 
Right. I, I, yeah, I can understand that. Ooh. Whereas opposed to like on later streets, you're going to, it's going to take a more studied player to maybe find the double and triple off situations. Um, so, you know, you can, like you said, the trees get smaller, you're going to get uh, more honest responses, the deeper you get in the pond per yep. se. So I don't think a ton about like, does this player like bluff a lot or not bluff a lot? I think a mm -hmm. lot more about um, how easy is it for this player to bluff or how easy is it for them not to bluff? So yeah, for example, okay. like you have this five of hearts turn and let's say you get like a deuce river, like players, whether they should bluff them or not, it's very easy to find the like king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack, jack, nine. Like there's a lot of very easy bluffs to find mm -hmm. versus if you put a queen on the river and they triple off, now what bluffs is it easy to find? Well, it's a, it's a pretty strong equity completer for, um, you know. So, I, his, so his like, I'll stop range. you even before you, like, there. Like, what hands do they have that are not pairs to bluff with? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> nine, nine X, I guess. Like, I, king nine. Like, it has to be, like, king four suited, king nine. Like, it become now it becomes, this, so this is what I'm talking, like, where I'm, like, going to, uh, like, yeah, it's like they have to have double barrel, king four, king five, king three, king deuce freaking pocket threes pocket fours like all this type of stuff it's really difficult to find the bluffs versus like it's pretty easy for even like a player that doesn't bluff much to find queen jack to triple off with here if, if the queen jack doesn't get there for example yeah, yeah, yeah so um that's kind of the way i think about bluff catching and like value to bluff ratios essentially and also too like people aren't um people only think about the bluffing side of it like this player doesn't bluff enough. I'm like, it's probably true. So even take this spot on the three and like, uh, I have to get used to this color schemes. Purple's all in, but also <laughs> if they're not bluffing enough, okay. Which we could probably agree. They're probably not triple barely enough. They're probably not shoving ace nine here. They're probably not shoving ace seven. They're probably not shoving ace six, ace five. Like a lot of people won't even shove ace jack here. So what does that do now? Like, the, it's 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 a ratio of value to bluffs it's not mm. a do they bluff game and so if they don't value bet they can't bluff and so um it's also like i don't think people think about that enough either all right so i think it's really important to think about <clears throat> like when they check back ace jack here i just actually start calling them more on the river which sounds counterintuitive but it's because now they're not value betting so they don't get bluffs if, if they're not shoving like on this three if they don't shove with ace jack now you just start calling when they shove <laughs> mm -hmm. because they don't have enough value bets and it's easy enough to find like queen jack jack nine king jack all these types of hands right so you kind of navigate your and adjust your river calls based on their ability to value Bet. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. So if the guy doesn't value bet often enough, that means he can't have enough bluffs. And then it becomes like there's weird things then about like it might become better to uh, call the river bet with like 10x than it does like ace five or like sorry, like ace seven. Mm. Because like if they're not value betting ace jack, their value range is probably like ace 10, pocket tens, those types of hands. Right. So it gets into like weird type of things there, but I don't think people think about that enough about like, if they don't value bet, like they also just don't get a bluff. Yep, their, their range construction, how they're kind of- uh, very, inter you know. very interesting. Uh, we wanted to know, how do you use tools like Sharkscope to make adjustments when you play online poker? Mm, not very much, a little bit. Uh, but do you like adjust maybe, your strategy against the big winners, against the big losers? Uh, we are um, not like a ton, like just because like I normally don't have time to like search it up, look it up, and stuff. Like mm -hmm. sometimes in the beginning of my session, when I just have a, a couple of tables, I'll start labeling people in my biggest buy and stuff. Um, but like my tags and stuff are you know very very simple, and then like. Um, just playing more hands against the players that are big losers, I guess, would be more so. 
um, I guess that would be um, part of it. So like the root of this question was co coming from a place essentially with our tagging system, I, I think. So like uh, a big way I used to use SharkScope personally was, you know, I would SharkScope the people um, at my table when I would get deeper. And then I would associate their tags based off of their winnings, which um, I've kind of moved away from that strategy just because I, I don't know how reliable that is. And we were kind of curious on your take with that. Um, obviously, like if someone's been losing for the duration of their online playing, um, yeah, playing pots with them in profitable situations makes a lot of sense. But um, And then calling those that are like big winners a little bit more because you know that they have a bit more bluffs than your average opponent. Right, or taking a more theory-based approach versus them, you know, like giving. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of like when someone's like graph is like straight down, or like if they're losers, like I probably call them a lot more though too on the river. Like it's mm. kind of those players are tend to be able to find probably more loose gambler types. So, um, but in general, like I put little stock into that. Um, gotcha. kind of just still focused on my game it's just like it's it's still just like data that's pretty hard to make an adjustment on um you probably yeah, yeah, can make yeah. small little adjustments on it sure but um i'd more just focus on like if i had 20 hands and they're playing 60 percent hands like i think that's more valuable than what their shark scope graph looks like even if it's only 20 hands okay do you, uh, do you make adjustments that early on after 20 hands yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Like if they're if they're raising like um uh, you know fifty percent of hands after twenty hands, it's still it, like it has to be a pretty big statistical anomaly for them to like not be over raising. Yeah, like that makes the, sense. if you if you would run the variance calculator on someone who's supposed to be raising like twenty five percent of hands and they're raising fifty percent over twenty, it's like probably like. I'm throwing a number out of my ass here, but it's probably 95% of the time they're, they, they, if you run the simulate, like those stats and expand it out over 100,000 hands, like they're yeah, the line is going to be not, not looking good, right? <laughs> it's probably after 10 hands, you could probably start to make that, like it's going to be like a statistical anomaly. Right. How about, yeah, yeah. How about ABI, Matt? Um, well, I'll use the ABI a little bit more like later on, like if it's a, hundred dollar final table and they're playing for ten dollars or if it's like you know a final table with twenty thousand up top and they have a twenty dollar average buy-in like sure like um i'll make a little like they're probably not going to pull the trigger as much but um these are all things where it's i still almost like focus a ton on like kind of my game like a little bit and i focus less on other people's games and i focus like until i have like information kind of okay. and so Fair like I, I make adjustments and stuff like based off of like population tendencies or just spots like like what i was saying like oh when the queen gets there on that ace 10 8 board it's really hard to find bluffs versus when it doesn't get there it's easier to find bluffs you know or like what's their value range there like there's like are they value betting enough those types of things are like um I'm just drawing from like my experience of playing, you know, hundreds of thousands of hands of what I see uh, until like I have like concrete type of information. Um, I think kind of like digging into this type of stuff while there is probably a little bit of edge to get like not much. Uh, if you're if you're spending too much time on it, it can probably be more of a distraction than anything else. Okay, very nice. Fair. So, Good. like, all I basically do is, like, like, show, like, I just copy paste the stats when I have time and, like, to my highest buy-in tables. Like, I'll, 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 like, for example, when I was playing the Venom and stuff, like, I'm just, like, marking players as I can, essentially. And I just have, like, I have, like, a whale, fish, like, bad rag, break, like, a, like, whatever rag, and then, like, good rag. Those are, like, this like tags i have that's as simple as my my tagging system is okay mm. uh, do you make adjustment based on the buying level you're gonna play 
And if so, what kind? Um, yes and no. I mean, like, probably get away with playing more hands at lower buy-ins. You're not going to get, like, you know, exposed as much for that. Um, you're going to have a lot more weaker players, which leads to playing more hands. So you're not going to get squeezed as much. You're going to you're going to realize more equity in, in spots. So um, <clears throat> definitely um, that um, I make more adjustments based on like, is it the reentry period or not? Like that type of stuff, I think is kind of important. Um, yeah. But still just focus on like and then like I still just focus on just playing my game a lot and um in terms of like trying to think like it's hard when you're not playing in terms of like i'm sure i do make adjustments based on the vine level and i'm like going back and thinking now um just like i might be a little more um casual with entering pots at like lower buy-ins i would think then um mostly due to probably um getting squeezed and stuff like that but in general mm -hmm. with like online like i'm gonna have stats or at least some hands on like how much people are three betting behind me which has to do more so with like am i gonna like enter the pot behind me like how often am i gonna get squeezed that type of stuff so like i'm more so just like looking at the stats of the players behind me and like who open rather than what the buy -in. like i'm not actually like looking at what the buy-in of the tournament is like i'm playing $30 tournaments to like 200s every night. And so I'm not really looking that much if it's a $30 tournament or a $200 tournament. I'm more just looking at like who are the players. Okay. Like, um, left to act and what, what are the stats and stuff and like what should I be doing in this spot a lot of the time. Okay. Um, and if somebody's listening here and he's playing small stakes, what do you think he should focus on the most? Uh, just work relentlessly on the fundamentals so like pre-flop flop play don't focus on like fancy stuff like learn how to check raise effectively learn how to um play from the big blind learn how to play from the button and um just like continue to build on the fundamentals and the really really high frequency situations so button small blind big blind and like playing flops, playing turns from those um, positions. Okay. Uh, and do you make any adjustment when you play like the top end of your buy-ins? Um, not too much. Like, like I said, it mostly has to do with just like I'm playing. Uh, what the uh, like the looking at who are the players? Yeah, I mean, it's right. like I'm looking at the stats the players have and stuff. And you know, if it's a site where I don't have a HUD, I'm just playing my own game at that point and so it's kind of uh um i always say like people always ask me like for the main event like world series book with like main event they're like oh what adjustments do you make for the main event and it's like i don't make any adjustments and it's, like i play why would i want to make adjustments from the game that i've been working on for the whole year for this tournament why am i going to make adjustments for like the most important tournament yeah so sense. like the analogy i know is like for like i'm american there's not all americans on here but like for the nfl like if you're a running team and you make it to the super bowl and your team just runs the ball runs the ball and plays defense why are you all going to sudden like going to change your game and start trying to throw the ball in the super bowl yeah you keep the same strategy and you put it forward yeah exactly that, that's kind of my thoughts on it there's different differing thoughts on the main event um but like yeah i think people go into this the main event with like a really really poor mindset in terms of that they try to do too many different things rather than just play their own game yeah. what about live tournaments in general like with more bad regs and fish like you don't alter your strategy really i do but i'm altering the strategy for like against those players i'm not altering the strategy for um like the tournament per se where like oh like i don't want to bust out early or any of that type of stuff so um like yeah if players are like gonna let me realize more equity then i can play more hands if they're not gonna squeeze enough then i can flat call more so it's like uh those types of adjustments that i will make like in game once uh you know i start to get a feel for the table and how players are playing but like there's a lot of like um yeah, so like a, a big one probably is you can flat call more if people aren't going to squeeze enough, which is 
often the case. Um, in general, like in live tournaments, like um, I tend to adjust to a, I don't do much flat calling from like middle position in a way. I tend to play like a, a three better or, or fold strategy, like especially early on. And the main reason is to avoid like five and six way pots. So um, I'll just tighten up a little bit and just play a three better fold strategy some of the times at some tables because when you flat you end up going like four ways and you're often going to be out of position now because people call too wide um and so i kind of feel sometimes the a squeeze your fold strategy especially because people don't four bet enough works really really well in um some of these live tournaments early on that's not like a specific you know uh main event or high buy-in type of adjustment but that's an adjustment like i'm playing a 1600 at the win and i'll probably be doing that early on in the tournament to avoid like some of these four and five way pots be doing like a lot of three betting um and in those types of spots and then flatting a lot more from like the button and cut off with like no information are you like over folding to check raises for example in a, in a live tournament as well just based off player pool tendencies uh it depends on like as a broad answer if you want to give it like yes uh, but it depends a lot on like board texture. Like I'm not going to fold a lot on like a nine high board, but like on an ace high board, I probably will. We've got, yeah, we've got a question actually specifically geared for three bets coming up. Yeah. What are the best exploits today that people are missing in their games? According to you, Matt. Um, I don't know if it's like exploits, but like people don't, well, it's more things that just like people don't do that they should do. Like people aren't check raising enough and then people don't three bet the flop enough versus check raise. So um, I guess to go on that, um, one of the exploits I tend to do a decent amount of, like everyone slow plays way too much in position. And so like you can take this various ways. Like there's a lot of times where I'm like going for value on like flop and turn like let's say out of position, they go call, call. And their ranges get really strong really quickly because they don't raise ever. They, they just always just call their strong hands to like keep your bluffs in. And there's times where I'll just go for a check fold on the river with some pretty strong hands because they don't value bet thin enough and they um, their ranges end up being too strong. Um, similarly, like I could make a check raise um, I, we can use this ace 10 8 for example um with like let's say like i check raise ace 9 and they call and then the turn maybe i put some bet out there they call like i might just check fold the river because they are basically like they love to slow play in these spots and their range like they don't value bet thin and it's just you're, you're ter the hands turn into like a straight bluff catcher on the river. Like so, basically, after they make like two consecutive calls, their ranges get way too strong. So they they don't um, they uh, they don't raise enough on the turn. Yeah, like for example, like they're or gonna have the all, they're gonna have all those ace kings, ace queens, ace jacks on the the turn. Like they're never raising those hands. And they're not raising against the check raise as well. This yeah, time. exactly. Like, so they, they arrive at the turn with those hands. So, um, like, um, ace nine, I might like check raise check or something like that. So and you like, can check raise a flop, blast the turn, and then check fold the river. Like, I've done that for sure. Okay. Um, it's, it gets a little weird where it's like, I'm not sure, like, what the exact way to exploit that is, where like, I'm I'm assuming it's like you do a lot more check raise check when they um but like you get to like your 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 I don't the adjustment might not even be much because basically your your gut shots and your bluffs realize more equity and your value hands get less equity like they they don't get enough money into the pot so like you make less money with your value hands but you make more money with your bluffs so it still kind of like probably balances out in the end Okay. It's just what hands you're making money with is shifting in that case. But in general, like people do not three bet the flop enough um, okay. at all. Um, and so that leads to realizing more equity with your bluffs and 
it hurts your value hands a little bit for sure. Okay. Now, here's one of our uh, like beliefs around here. Uh, do you think we should fold against three bets prey flop uh, versus population? Uh, since we think they do not bluff enough. Um, over four against three, probably bets. sure, like probably for sure. But I think kind of the days are over where, like, I don't know if there's really anyone that's just like three betting like queens, kings, aces, ace, king anymore. Like, even like live, like I have a player label that's pretty tight. And, like they three bet in a spot and they showed up with like ace ten offsuit and stuff like people kind of know now that they should three bet with some non-premium hands and they do are going to show up a plus very much but as a general rule yes like i am folding a lot more of the closer hands to three bets and also i'm like now like a lot of stuff has come out with like you know when does icm start to kick in um you know and a lot of these like very close EV spots become pretty bad, pretty uh, like quickly. So, so yeah, if you we're, got, we're man, if you got, oh, sorry, let me. precisely about like these hands that are zero EV that sometimes flicking a call, flicking a fold, all the bottom of the range. Uh, our guess is that if people don't find all of these, they might find one or two every now and then, but. They don't find half of these in general, and you're defending the the range you should be defending. You're gonna lose EV for sure, no? Yeah, I would agree with that um, for sure. I also agree a little bit that like, I mean, like that's a hundred percent like a true statement. But if you like go back to the three betting range, like it's also too like they don't three bet as thin for value. Like they're not three betting like tens and sevens and nines and eights and stuff like that. And yeah. but but as a general rule, yes, I'm overfolding the bottom of the range so a good way to think about like exploits like a really good way to think about it is what what's the cost of this so like i'll ask you now like what's the cost of folding all these like 0.1 and even like even like a hand like 98 suited that's 0 0.07 like what's the cost of overfolding these hands probably not zero the, the... well no i mean like what's the um you don't get to see uh, a flop that I, I'm trying to ask the question to get the answer I want, but it's not. I, I'm, are, I'm asking the question wrong. Are um, you tight? It's, it, are you trying to get at like you're tightening your range and you're kind of incentivizing them to play more aggressively into you? Yeah. So it's like the cost is allowing them to three bet you more. Right. I think and that, yeah. it's you have to ask yourself: Is that like an expensive cost here? No, because they already don't do it enough. Yeah. So if that's the case, then yeah. For sure that's like a good like the cost is not worth it then. so i use that analysis in a lot of spots so yeah. what's the cost to folding to this check race so you asked me that earlier like what's the cost of folding like like i fold the top pair to tech check raises like a decent amount in certain spots like what's the cost to doing that it's well are you like they should be check raising you more and like deciding is that cost like what's the the cost of that here Okay. You know what I mean? So, it's so a, I guess, so I guess um, what I run into a lot is you get a real tight player and they don't three, they three bet, but they don't three bet the correct sizing. So you get sucked into calling. Oh my God, those are, those are the things that tilt me the most. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you get sucked into calling that three bet just because of the sizing, even though you know, they've got a very strong hand. Yeah. yeah so, so like in those situations, like I've actually like ran some, stuff where it's like you start calling like you still call a lot with the hands that can out flop like aces and kings and stuff it's like pseudo connectors and pairs and those types of hands and you start folding like ace queen like even yeah. like ace queen suited and stuff so like a micro um, three bet and then and then um you overfold the flop a lot yeah you, you massively overfold the flop so That's like kind you of got, the exploit yeah there. so you got nine ten suited Let's say, and then you flop top pair tens. You're gonna fold that if this yeah bets. yeah like you if the flop comes like ten five three rainbow, like and they bet like half pot. You can just like fold if you're like right. say like forty big blinds effective after they three bet and stuff. Like that's not the type of um, situation. Very interesting. Looking for. 
So yeah. I've done a little bit of work on that, but not a ton. Um, it's actually probably a good like webinar thing to work on. Um, Have you seen that become more prevalent uh, in the game lately? Just the uh, more consistent micro three bets? Mm, Especially on no, um, I don't think so. I'm I'm seeing it more. Like I had uh, like a guy the donk three bet with queen ten, you know that used to always be aces is now is now queen ten. You know I I've seen that I've had that happen to me quite a bit in the so smaller stakes. Mm. All right. Now, do you use a lot of uh, node locking when you study, or do you prefer to use that uh, to use the original sim? Um, I do almost no node locking. Um, partly because I suck at it and never could figure out 100% how to do it. <laughs> and also, too, like, I also part of it is like, it's, I think, really hard to effectively probably do it well because one node lock, like, and then the sim's going to auto adjust. Yeah. And then it's like not going to be accurate again. And so, like, it's pretty hard to just like, no lock one part of the tree without no locking every part of the tree effectively. Um, so it's something that I've never like really okay dug into that much. So it's not something that I specialize in or am good at at all. I'm not saying it's not <laughs> worthwhile or anything. I'm sure it is worthwhile. It's just something that I've never really um, dug into too much. So right. for like for like a comment on that. Um, Probably better for more sweeping, simplified adjustments than really like trying to pinpoint things, though, just because of um, the difficulty of uh, doing that accurately. Yeah, yeah. Like I've done like very simple stuff where like, so for example, like one of the ones that I, I, I like and is really cool, like say the flop is like ace eight three rainbow and you uh so it's like normally just like a range bet small in position mm -hmm. but if you like reduce their check raising range by like half it basically shifts now to like like yeah so like check and then like so like yeah bet two or bet whatever like essentially now if they aren't check raising like all these like six, five suited, like if you reduce their check raising range by half, essentially with like ace jack, like have them uh, go back to the cutoff strategy. Like you'll just shift to like betting like 7.6 with like the ace king, the ace queen, the ace jack, and you'll never bet small. Mm. That's because you're not like a lot of the value, some of the, a lot of the value that comes from those hands is getting check raised by worse hands. And if that's not happening enough, you're not getting enough money into the pot. So since they don't check raise enough, we should work on bigger sizings. Or um, you end up like going bigger with like the more polar parts <clears throat> of your range, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, he, okay. he's just using that as an example that he's done yeah. before. Okay, because we have a, another question related to that later. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you are playing online poker, what criteria do you consider for game selection? Uh, do you look at the size of the field, the format, the side? late registration st strategy yeah so i've spent a lot of time kind of thinking about this and i recently kind of like the start of the year kind of was like um i've made a lot of adjustments to what my schedule is online and it involves a lot of like a lot of my volume has shifted from acr to bet online global wsop um, and really focusing on entering tournaments with like massive edges and like a lot of the, like, you know, two fifteens on ACR and stuff like, yeah, I'm winning in them, but they are really big fields with high variance and the ROIs are like fine, but not very good versus I can play a um, $50 hundred person tournament on global where I'm probably winning like 70%. Um, like there's being, I, th I think a big part of online poker is putting yourself in really, really good positions in terms of high EV tournaments and 
you really can like start to control um, a lot of the variants a lot more. <laughs> okay, nice. And so I've done a lot. I've I've learned a lot recently from like um, Beefiz and some of that. And he's been around for years, and he's never played high stakes. And he just kind of grinds out all these like forties to like hundreds and stuff of just like super super high ev type of tournaments and like doing this for a couple of months is like the especially like on sites with some smaller fields and stuff like it's, it's really like good mindset where you're just kind of just making two final tables every single night yeah. like if you're playing 30 tournaments a night and they're all 100 person tournaments like it's kind of hard to go more than like two days or three days without like a final table and uh just kind of not like chasing I, I think this is like a big big thing with uh people is they love to chase they always look at what first place is which has very um i don't want to say has very little to do with their roi but people way overestimate what it has to do with their roi especially because in these big first places they're often unlimited re-entry and really large fields which means really high variance and uh, lower rois and so um focusing more on really really um um so for example like one of the tournaments like i kind of like have almost stopped playing is the um the the sunday special on acr i only play the the 10 30 a.m pacific one it's like the sunday special one is like at least for me like my roi has been awful in that and it's such a fast structure uh, in that tournament like there's not a ton of like it's a really big field obviously and it's like a 200k but it's a really really deep unlimited re-entry uh where like every pro is playing it and like swapping that out for like um like a 50 dollar 25k on bet online that runs in the morning or something like that so for me it's like i have a set number of tables i play so it's normally like I'm trying to reduce tables. That's like another thing about it. So like nine tables. And so basically just trying to put myself in the nine best tournaments I can. So to uh, expand upon that, like, you're talking about like the, uh, the 215 on ACR or the, w which tournament did you say you removed? Well, the big With fields, the, the Sunday. Like the Sunday game. special, like the two, the, yeah, the, the 215 Sunday special where like I'll right. play like the 1030 one that has better structure better structure yeah, yeah, on yeah. it but yeah. like like a lot of these 215s on acr like the rois i don't think are that great on them um and so it's like i'd rather put myself in a tournament with like a so like for example like that 215 let's say i have a 20 percent roi in it I can play a 55 for like a 55 I need to have like an 80% ROI in it type of thing like it's just it's a um um it's I'm trying to think of it the best way it, it's 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 a cost analysis basically like that and then it's a well what are the bankroll requirements then when you're playing a $50 tournament where let's say I you have a 60% ROI versus a 215 tournament where you have a 20% ROI yeah, like, not, then it's the then it starts to like you start to think about well what's the variance of like you know that's a like a big big difference on your variance in terms of that like right. roi has like the biggest influence on your variance so if you're choosing games where you know you have like a massive edge in terms of roi um that's one gonna help um reduce your variance and also then start with that focus and stop focusing on like what first place is and start just just churning out like um, you know um, like what beef is beef is kind of says this is a graph that goes straight up and to the right like kind of it it's 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 pretty good uh, like mindset and I've, I've enjoyed it a lot more since I've kind of shifted down from playing like chasing every single big field um, uh, ACR versus just kind of uh, the small weak games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've uh, I've recently made that adjustment in my game to um I, I think I watched that webinar you're talking about. He was mentioning being a more effective CEO of uh your online schedule, I think is how he was describing it. 
and um, I've been doing a lot more uh, bet online volume as well, and it's been yeah, it's been good I mean, for my mental. I mean, I've been playing on there always. And it's like, like on global poker, I'm beating the one tens for 55%. Yeah. It's pretty over, hard, right? over like over a thousand games. So I got a quick follow up. I uh, recently switched to global too. And like you said, you don't really adjust your game the way you play based on the field, but I found that I play way differently on global than I did on ACR. Because yeah, it's sure. such a different game. So are you not really making that many adjustments? Um, yes and no. Like, it's harder to make adjustments there because you don't have a, a HUD. Like, a HUD. So in that mind, I think it's harder to make adjustments. Like, I would say the general player on global is less aggressive. Um, and so it's just more important, though, to pay attention and, like, take notes at showdowns when that come up and then make adjustments from there. But um, in terms of like, I tend to like play my game until otherwise, but, um, but yeah, like I, I would say for sure the, the, the general player there is for sure less aggressive. All right. Uh, when you're looking at uh, pre-solve ICM models, uh, for example, like those on Preflop Academy, uh, do you make any adjustments from these charts or you use them kind of as is? Uh, big thing here. So I don't do any copying with ICM models. So, so when studying ICM, it's all about learning and understanding the, um, the, the topics. Because in ICM, there's like almost no two situations that are ever the same. And so you really just have to understand the concepts so you can apply them very well in game. And so when you're looking at like pre-solve like ICM models and stuff, like no one's playing accordingly. And so it's about understanding like why things are happening so that you can make um, the proper adjustments um, in terms of these uh, like charts that you're looking at so for example like there's a lot of spots where like you should be like flatting queens and jacks and stuff so so one of the things with ic like especially at final tables um i actually end up four bet shoving really 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 wide at final tables and the main reason is is because i think three people like just assume like especially against like chip leaders because they just assume they can play every single hand and assume they can three bet everything and they end up like just having way out of rack whack like bluff to value ratios um three betting in these spots and so i end up like four bet jamming a decent amount of final tables um and they also like open way too wide so like i end up three betting quite wide against um um like chip leaders okay and so it's it's more so about like understanding what's going on and what should be going on and um uh, thinking about like how spots are supposed to work and then just kind of using logic from there but uh like blindly following them is like never a good option even like whether it's icm or not like blindly following these um you know okay yeah sure i focus like a lot on studying gto off the table but like i'm really actually thinking about it while i'm playing whether it's icm or not i'm just like playing poker kind of at that point Okay. And so I'm using like it as a, like a guide to study. And then when I'm playing, I'm like, and the, like, this is probably pretty important. Like in all situations, just um, I'm playing poker. Like I'm not really like, I'm not playing GTO or anything. I'm just playing poker when I'm playing poker. Not, I'm not thinking about like MDF. Like I'm not thinking about what percentage of my range I need to full. Like I, I am like a little bit like that's ingrained in my thought process, but like it's, um, I'm going through my my standardized like kind of thought process and how I make decisions at that point. Okay. Uh, when you plug your hand into HRC uh, and you're looking at the results, um, like Ben CB said that uh, you should probably look at the rule of like the value of aces and then uh, take the value of like 10% of what aces gives in EV or in um, basically an ICM value. And then this is basically the range you should never really mess with. And then whatever is outside of that range can be adjusted based on your player. 
Uh, what do you think about that kind of suggestion? Sure. Seems reasonable. I mean, like I use it a little bit, like kind of as a, it's just kind of a baseline of value. Yeah, like, right. What does 0.03 mean? What does point, you know, six mean? What is point like they're all relative numbers? And so you need something to compare them to. And so ACES is a good hand to compare it to because that's the most money you can make in the spot. So uh, that's kind of what the thinking of is of that like 10% of ACES rule. That's, you know, um, it's just because you want to compare to something and so the most money you can make is a decent starting point i think and um yeah i i think it's okay i mean uh, i probably could be proved wrong with it probably be proved right but i think it's a reasonable like it makes sense to me yeah sure uh on the flop um when you're deep stacked uh, like a gto solution will often like size up uh, based on like the flop texture your hand strength do you think there's a lot of EV to gain to have like a mixed size on the flop? Um, yes and no. If you're like, it, it, it's these types of things I would um, for sure apply to like, I'm trying to think how I want to answer it. Um, okay, well, let me continue the, the question. Yeah. Uh, like we believe that population overfold the big bets. And then a large backing stable, we have friends over there, they, they suggest that since population is never balancing enough bluffs when they use the big side, they tell their backies to just fold to the big bets. Uh, I would agree with the third point that people tend to, it's easier to find the big, the value bets for the big bets and a little bit harder to find the bluffs. So um, I agree with the third part, part for sure. Yeah. Uh, the second part, I don't have a strong opinion on it's probably true that they overfold the big bets um so if you're yeah. including your value into your big bet portion i mean it's you're kind of like getting exploited against like a lot of players if you see what i mean yeah like this is why i get um cautious with like exploits sometimes because it's like there's always like normally a pretty easy like is there an easy counter argument to that and like this is a pretty like easy counter argument to that um on when like i think there is ev into it and so it, essentially like if population is overfolding the big bets essentially then your bluffs you should just right. make that bluff more yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's what we're basically doing yeah yeah and like even if you have your value bets in there like you're gonna make the same amount of money it's just your bluffs are going to make more and your value rates are going to make less. Like you could start to value bet smaller there, but it's like more so they're, they're, they're folding like the middling parts of your range. So like if you bet, bet like ace queen on an ace high flop, like they're not folding an ace to one bet. So it's, um, you know, we're kind of, you can kind of go down a rabbit hole of like what people are thinking and stuff like that. Um, I still always believe kind of it's, it's, people overestimate how much they understand what another person's thinking okay. in a lot of spots, especially online where you have like, you don't know if this person just has a, you know, a whiskey in front of them. You don't know if this person has 15 <laughs> tables, if they have one table and they're playing on the couch, like you don't know any of this stuff. So it's kind of hard to uh, over it. I think people overestimate their ability to understand what someone is thinking in these types of spots. Okay. Uh, here at the study session, we will often advocate like uh, for a strategy for when you three bet, you should probably see better range on most of the, the scenarios. Uh, how important is it to have a checking range in three bet box from out of position? Um, just how you really like the big blind and the small blind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The small like blind probably... Uh, like if you if you look at an aggregate report from the small blind, it's pretty easy to know which flops to check because it's just the low boards. Yeah, so like your more linear, like, it's gonna yeah. be like seven high, eight high, six high. So there, it, there's um a couple of different ways again to think about this, and it kind of again goes down the rabbit hole of exploits of like what are the counter arguments. So the like on like a seven high board, it's like the reason you're checking is you have too much offsuit Broadway and all this type of stuff. And also if you check the imposition player is supposed to bet a bunch and then you can put in a check raise um, with certain parts of your range. So, but also if you just see bet everything, like they probably overfold to your C bet. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I still like having both options because they overfold the C bets. And also like people play really badly against like check raises in these types of situation. Um, so it's I'm not going to say like, like it's player dependent. Like I like to use like the float bet stat a lot. Um, I had that on my HUD. So how often they float bet. So how often they're betting versus a check um, is like a pretty important stat like this. And then like, mm -hmm. I would just use the, well, what's their full to see bet stat type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But as like a general, like simplified rule, you're probably not giving up much by just C betting range from out of position for a small sizing. Um, I, I, I would find it hard to see you're giving up a ton of EV from there and then just working from there. Like you're going to end up having to check the turn more often would be the cost, mm -hmm. um, which is cost and benefits that. But um, I think there's people already play like bad enough in position where I still like to have a checking range um, on like the low boards in those spots. But um, you're probably not giving up much at all, having a just a uh, C bet range strategy. Like, okay. so, so yeah, to expand no upon that real quick, uh, just briefly, like um, our general strategy is kind of based off low and high cards. So, like the low boards, I think uh, there's usually a pretty strong um, agreement. You know, con we're consistent on checking some of those, but often we'll be running um, a trainer simulation and we'll get a, a board like. I don't know, um, ace, king, king. And um, it'll often be said like, this is an obvious, you know, bet large spot or half pep, half pot bet when in actuality, um, the solver on some of these high card textures is yeah, playing the, the ace, the king, ace, queen, a lot of that stuff, it checks a lot. Yeah, it's playing very slowly, um, uh, especially at these like really volatile SPRs, like at 40 and a three bet pot. So um, what, what are your opinions on balancing out the strategies in those scenarios? So I guess like the counter for me, like the way to think about it then would be like to ask you, so Galen, why, why do you think the solvers check it a lot on those boards? So like, let me pull up like a, I don't know, like an ace king king board, like you said. I'm like small blind or something. Um, sure. Small blind three bet. Small blind versus button, I think is yeah, going to be good. fine. Yeah, it's cut fine. off. Same thing. So it'd be like ace king king rainbows. Yeah, it's going to check a decent amount. And why is it checking a lot? Well, so like my thoughts with this are that we're in a three bet pot um 40 big blinds effective so you don't need all three streets to get all the chips in and you have this your three bet range has this board so locked up that um essentially his range is going to need some help sometime to catch up yep uh i agree with all that that's for sure it's like it the board is it's it's the board is very very static and yeah. so that's number one. And number two is like your bluffs have very little to no equity on this board. So you have a lot of hands that oh, okay. don't yeah, want to play point. a lot. So it has to do more so with like Jack nine of diamonds is basically drawing dead when it gets called. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so you have a lot of these hands that just don't want to put a lot of money into the pot because they have such little equity. And also the cutoff has really good board coverage here. The cutoff has a ton of ace x or the cutoff has a ton of king x we Absolutely. do as well and so basically like if you bet small like if you bet here you're going to end up like narrowing the range to a really really strong range where it's still really hard for you to like let's say you have ace queen and you bet and they call it's like you're not really comfortable going for three streets either way <clears throat> well you've kind of put yourself in a bad position like if they're calling i mean you you're almost like in bluff catcher mode at this point like, exactly so it's kind of like that's that's like answering your question kind of there i feel like of like it's more about understanding why the strategy is doing it rather than what's going on okay. and so that's kind of what's going on here is because of you're out of position and you don't want to just be bloating this pot with hands with like zero equity and mm -hmm. so you have enough hands like jack 10 queen 10 like yeah, those hands have equity, but they're also like potentially drawing dead if against like boat out, say like king queen or king 10 or king jack, you know, when they make a straight, for example, you're not even happy to put a shit ton of money into the pot. Um, right. You, you're, 
basically on this stack of a board, it's just you have too many hands out of position that have very little to no equity to be driving in that much money into the pot. Okay, so if we were going to generalize it, it, it's kind of a function of the locked up equity in, a, in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah, and you have too many hands that are struggling to, um, that don't have like a good equity profile for right. like turns the range, the ranges out of position. Are just, uh, yeah, the ranges are just the haves and the have nots at this point. So essentially it goes back to like, I always say in a lot of spots, like it's, cheaper to like overfold the flop than it is cheaper to overfold the turn or the river and in this spot then if you just bet range here you're gonna end up overfolding the turn a lot fair yeah yeah that's true okay all right do you have a time for a few more questions now yeah 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 we're good okay uh well we noticed that uh on icm final table whenever you're facing rfi and you have like a hand like a nine that have a nine or an eight and you're against late position it's bad so for example you're on the uh, big real quick louis sorry you skipped uh, the one about the gg rollback which i actually wanted to touch on yeah we can go back to it uh, on gg poker um the final table has a blind rollback i don't know if you're familiar with that so what that does is that yeah, yeah, I'm a little bit familiar with it. It's been a long time since I played on GG, but yeah. Okay, and then also there's a rollback effect, and there's a massive pay jump usually between tenth and nine. Like it's usually two wigs the money. And then, how do you think these uh, elements of the game should impact like uh, your final table strat final two table strategy? Because if you steal a pot right before the rollback. Like the pot you sold is like five times bigger. Um, I wouldn't think about it that way. I don't, I could be wrong, but like thinking about it as stealing a pot is it, it's five times bigger. I don't think applies because it's more just the chips. So mm -hmm. it's like, does it matter if the final table, the blinds are 510 or 500, 1000? It's the same chip sacks for everyone. I think the uh, the interesting idea behind this was and where like the root of this question comes from is, OK, like if the chip average is somewhere like around 15 to 20, um, the rollback will be quite large. So the value, the, the risk reward profile has essentially increased. So like you can only wager two big blinds as a minimum. But if the bubble was to pop next hand, that wagers actual like value is closer to opening blind. a pot for six big blinds and the chips that you would win is closer to like 13 big blinds or something. Does that make kind of sense? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Like I understand that. Um, however, like when you're calculating ICM values, it has nothing to do with what the blinds are. It, it has to do with like chip sacks and the total chips in play, essentially and reassigning those two. And uh, it, it basically what the ICM model does is it takes the total chips in place, takes the percentage of chips that each player has, and then assigns their probability of finishing in each position based on those chips. Right. So they, in any ICM calculations or anything, the blinds aren't calculated into it. Now, like this does bring like, I could see this bringing EV in terms of like, if you make it to the final table, people are going to bust out too quickly and they can. And so like, there's some EV in terms of that. Um, mm -hmm. I think the bigger adjustment is you have two kind of like, that's more difficult is you have two kind of things working against each other. Um, like one is you're at one of the highest, um, ICM um, points. like ICM points of the tournament where like boss busting out is very, very costly. But two, you also have a, you're playing, assuming with a very, very big ante five-handed. Um, at least in live, you'd be playing with a full big blind ante. I don't know how GG does it on these. And so like, that's going to make like the biggest adjustment is like, what is the ante here five-handed? Mm -hmm. okay. um, and so without thinking too much about it, like, and I haven't studied this because I don't play on GG. Okay. Um, and so like yeah, that's why I, I would kind of play still my game, but I'm sure there probably is a decent amount. Of, like I'm sure there's some adjustments, but I would just be guessing if um, 
I would just be guessing here if I was going to try to do it. I, I honestly don't know. Like, those are just my thoughts off the top of my head on it. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Like, I'm, I'm happy to hear anything because that, like, I don't have a ton of, I haven't thought about it really ever. Well, okay. So I was, it was an intriguing question to me when um, it was kind of explained to me how that scenario is. So I've played with HRC a little bit and, like, adjusted, like, the opening sizes and, and things like this to try to like model it. And I, I've, I've failed up to this point, really. Like, I, like, I don't know how you can model that in, a, in, in HRC at all. So like, that's yeah. the thing that's like, it's pretty hard to model. All well, right. so what I was doing was I was adjusting the opening sizes. So instead of like making a standard open two big blinds, I was making it like five or something, but it, so that's where like that's where like again like i explained like where i disagree because the icm mm -hmm. model really doesn't consider what the blinds are but like, yeah that's fair um because like right. the risk premiums are gonna be yeah so All right. it's just, there, there, yeah, sorry yeah, there's just so much more playability on a final table after the rollback to where in, in my mind that it's each pot you lose is detrimental and each pot you win is such significant ev um yeah i would think right. there's something to it but it's tough to so if i can define it in different terms and sorry for my baby over here um like matt saying i think i agree with you that the icm model doesn't care because it cares what percentage of chips you have in play um but the question is about future game you know like do you want to go against yep. this you know table of nine with 15 big blind stacks what's that look like what's your edge how do they play do they make big mistakes do they actually end up playing kind of okay um versus do you want to play with them at 40 like the same questions do they actually kind of play well there do they play really badly um and i don't really have clear answers on that all right i think that's the question that i, I would agree ask. with that and then the other but the other thing is is like both of those like you're set you you you're once you're making that decision you're openly accepting to sacrifice current ev for potential future ev that you may not get yeah that would be my like counter argument to that mm -hmm. um and so it's kind of like and again it's like okay every chip you win is worth way more or do you save the chips for that like i don't know enough so i would just play how i would normally play All but right. um All right. yeah i don't really <laughs> Uh, we were wondering, uh, we picked up a few patterns uh, for ICM final table strategy. For example, when you face RFI from late position and you have a nine or an eight in your hand, it's bad. But when you face RFI from an early position and you have a jack or a 10 in your hand, it's bad. Give you an example. Under the gun open final table, you're looking at jack 10 suited from the cutoff. So this is a spot where GPV, you know, kind of have to do something. But at ICM, the fact you have a jack and a 10, you block both the bottom of the opening range from under the gun. So it's really bad. You're just going to fold preflop. Uh, have you seen similar patterns on ICM points for the final table like these? Um, I could be wrong, but I, I think a lot of the reason you're folding jack 10 suited there isn't because of necessarily like the blockers are bad. It's more so, so, so in ICM, what essentially what has happened is like you have a risk premium on your head, obviously. And so the EV of calling goes down tremendously. And so you end up in a lot of situations where you do more three betting than calling because the EV of calling has gone down quite a bit. And with Jack 10 student, like the EV of like three betting that hand isn't very good because it doesn't have an ace or a king in it. So you end up wanting a three bet hands, obviously that block the four bet range, which is going to be more ace X and king X heavy. Um, I'd be careful with, um, so like if ranges get wider or bad blockers changing or just expanding, it's as ranges get wider, blockers become less important because as they get wider, the it's just, a blocker removes less and less of the like good hands. And so a blocker becomes less valuable as ranges get wider. And that's like, I, we kind of touched on that earlier with like wide ranges on the flop versus tight ranges on the river when we're making adjustments. Uh, like when I make my exploits, like that's like kind of the same situation there because it's really hard to make adjustments when um, ranges are really, really uh, wide. So 
it has to do more in terms of just the EV of like, we're not doing much calling in those spots versus um, three bedding, I would think. Um, but as range is getting wider, it's like blockers just become less valuable. Um, okay. That's for sure true. How do you deal with like super aggressive four bed strategies that often appear like on ICM models, like those King five suited all in versus three bets? Um, well, I think I kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. I yeah. think like yeah. people don't do that. And so, yeah, they're in the models, mm -hmm. but like, I just don't think they also like, they're never, they don't execute those hands. Um, right. And so uh, it's more so like what I want to take away with a model from that is like, what's going on? What types of hands do you want to be four bet shoving? What types of hands are good for it? Um, it's in the, the ICM models. I think what the most important part is like, what's, what should be like the optimal, like value to three bet bluff ratios, et cetera. Like what hands should they be value three betting and go with it? And what percentage of hands is that? And what, like, how many bluffs can those uh, hands handle? You know, that's, I think, what's kind of gets really important at these ICM preflop stuff. When you get into, like, preflop ICM stuff, it, it, it turns into a lot into a um, ratio game of, like, having the correct ratios of value to bluff in these, like, three bet, four bet games. And that's mm -hmm. like what really, really drives your strategy. Okay. And what drives your exploits. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, quick question about the final table. You know, there's that that old rule that says when you're at the final table, you can, as the big stack, you kind of want to keep the short stack alive when you got four left to bully the middle stacks. Is it is it, is it a thing or uh, is it not a thing? Um. I mean, yeah, I've, so I've heard of it. And like, to be honest, I haven't done a lot of study to, to know if it's an actual thing or not. Um, have, you, have you looked a little bit at um, multi-way post-flop strategy? Uh, yeah, yeah, quite a bit. What are the best takeaways? Best takeaways. Um, so I think one of like the important things that people like, like multi-way pots are just like a logic game kind of. And it's one of the things it, it really sucks to be the person stuck in the middle is really, really important part to remember. And the person stuck in the middle often gets to fold a lot. And that's the person that's making a lot of the bigger folds because if you have like an MDF, basically, it's always going to put a majority of the defense strategy is going to be put on the person that's last to act. Um, yeah. in terms of like, that's the person that's going to be having to do a lot of hero calling in spots, um, not the person in the middle. And so it gets, um, guy in the middle doesn't have a much of a raising range, right? Okay. No, normally they don't. Normally if you are stuck in the middle with, uh, uncapped ranges behind you, you end up playing a call fold strategy a lot of the time, which I don't know <sighs> is good. Um, in theory, or not in theory, like in practice, because once it goes like back call, like there's supposed to be like some a lot of squeezing that goes on from the third player in the pot, similar to like pre flop. Um, and so, and I really like squeezing in those spots because um, a lot of people don't call with stronger hands, and so you can kind of start to squeeze just like you would pre flop when someone um, is squeezing. Um, you know, when there's flat collars in the middle. So um, three-way, sorry, it's hard to talk about these things. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a visual person that like needs a <laughs> hand in front of me and I can talk through a hand and different things. But like visually, I think it's understanding the differences between being the player in the middle and being last to act, I think is very, very important um, in multi-way pots. Okay. And also recognizing bet sizing in multi-way pots and the effect of bet sizing um, on MDF and the way that that ha affects like recognizing like that uh, a half pot bet in a three-way pot is like you can almost treat that like you would like a full pot bet or even more in a heads up pot if you like kind of run the math on MDF frequencies um, like a half pot bet in multi-way is similar to like facing a full pot bet in a heads up pot oh very um, interesting. not a 
not exactly like it doesn't exactly work like that but like if you want like a little framework to think about like it, it, it's a helpful framework in terms of how to think about things okay are there, are there any like general heuristics you can glean from like considering heads up how you would play a hand heads up and then like in how it would change just a little bit with the third person in there or do you just use three-way tools um yeah like you can like if you don't have a three-way tool you can probably figure out some stuff like um through a heads up stuff. And there's some spots where I'll run us, like I'll look really quick at like GTO wizard or something at a heads up spot, because I don't want to spend the time to run it three ways, but. Right. So there's some um, general heuristics that'll probably stay the same. I mean, it's still like poker. It, it's more uh, like what's changing in a three way pot is like the minimum defense frequency. And the main thing is like, you don't have to hero call anymore with like the bottom parts of your range in a lot of spots because you have a third player. Like it's, let's say the button's betting the small blind and the big blind are a team and their right. job is to make it that they, they call enough together to clear the MDF. So the button can't bet with any two cards profitably. Right. So that's kind of the way to go about it. Um, you don't have to make like a lot of high card calls. You can start to fold a lot more like your backdoor flush draw type of hands. Um, and your range has become a lot con more condensed quickly. Um, in a three-way spot. Okay. Very nice. Well, I think we covered all of our questions, Matt. So th thanks a lot for uh, coming with us, uh, for sharing. Do you have anything you want to add? Um, <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Uh, I don't think so. Um, so what do, you, what do you guys, like, what are the main study tools you guys are using in this group? GTO wizard. Yeah. So uh, before this, what you guys were doing, uh, what, what spot were you guys running? Let's go through some, I want to do like some I'd trainer rather, work. Yeah. Let's do some trainer work. I have to, yeah. do, my, uh, I have to do my warm up anyways for my, my tournament. So we can, I can do, uh, I'm happy to do some trainer work for, we were doing the alternative uh, that we thought about for this session was to do exactly this. I, I told, I told them Matt to just run you through some trainer work. They were like Q and a, what tool do you use the most, Matt? Uh, probably this. And do you use HRC a lot? Uh, I started using it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, want to use it to construct uh, like squeeze ranges and stuff like chip PV? Um, not necessarily <laughs> just like because I'm mostly using like the charts. But if I'm using like I would use that, for example, with like. So we were talking about earlier, like what adjustments are you making to these a small size three bet with a really tight range? So you got like two constraints, like one that makes you want to fold and one makes you want to call, right? right? And so like you could run that in HRC and get a more accurate, you know, right. um, idea. And then you could copy those ranges, put it in, you know, pile solver, run it, and then have a better idea. Like, and what ends up ha happening is you you still call a lot, but you like full ace queen off and you call with like six three suited basically is like what ends up happening or yeah six, four, I, I did like, some of that work actually that's kind of what i came up with and michael acevedo actually also said uh we had him last month and he said versus like these micro three bets he said we should four bet more yeah i mean uh if they're not three betting just aces kings queens and right. ace king yeah like that was the example we we're using in that but yeah uh, like it's like some of these like, players use I like find all the slivers and like you do them 100 percent, but since they shouldn't be doing them 100 percent, it seems like they just use a smaller bet size to uh, widen their range what are you doing louis you i just want to this i just want to show matt uh, something what is this i haven't used pre-flop academy in a long time yeah well i, I love pre-flop academy they have this i this, ICM we, we use this a lot yeah yeah uh, i mean like i basically unsubscribe because like i had ranges from three or four different sources but right okay so Split. this is something we'll do maybe once a week uh this is basically a final table trainer this is final this is all final table yeah yeah and then we're gonna uh, train ranges we're squeezing here so do you think it's good for us to trade like this or with final table range with icm ranges like that I mean, like, yes and no, as long as you, it's more so like, um, so, so I saw a number, uh, I'm going to ask you guys this, when you go through GTO 
trainer in one hour, how many hands do you get through? 100, maybe. Okay. No, so, no way. No. All right. How many do you think? We we never get through 100. Maybe like three minutes if, each hand. Sometimes you get, go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we get through 15 hands in 15 minutes, and then we spend 15 minutes on one hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go. like, so I end up, like, I go really slow. And so, because I'm more concerned about, like, um, I call. Yeah. Then we can see. Like, good. I'm more concerned about, like, the strategy here. Yeah, because it's not about then, just the hand. It's about what your range is doing. I'm more just hand. concerned about, like, understanding the situation rather than, like. Well, yeah. So, honestly, when we do these trainers, we're not trying to really duplicate this. And, honestly, like, they get tired of me saying it. But I'm, like, I tell them all the time, like, we should be using these with a heavy grain of salt just because it's, like, some of it's a fairy tale, right? Like, yeah and it's more so like like so what i would be doing here is like i'm calling with this hand i'm trying to think like what are the bottoms of my range like mm -hmm. what types of hands like an easy question to ask here is like so like what's your three bet value range here like that's an easy question to ask so right? like it's going to be suited aces like you're probably going to just like well, for value high for value um like because like, bluffs or whatever because that's like based on the, i always start with value because bluffs are based on what the value bet is so so aces kings queens exactly uh, Jacks. Jack, I don't think I think Jack's iffy. flat here. Yeah, I don't Jacks think, are, I don't, I I don't think you're three bet. Uh, oh, Jacks yeah. actually might shove. Jacks might shove, shove and Queens squeeze. That might be the case, but it's probably pretty close. Like this hand calls. How about Ace King? Ace, Ace King off shoves. Value. Ace King. Yeah. Ace King suited three bets. Even Queens might shove. Yeah. Nope. Nice. So Jacks call. Yeah. I thought Jacks maybe Jack's could shove. Ace Jack. <laughs> Because normally it's like a general like good rule is like you can normally shove the hand that's just below like your three by value range. So I was like pretty sure we could squeeze queen. So that's why I was like jacks might shove. But I think I said like first I was like call was kind you of you said call yeah, yeah said like call. so like ace king off shoves ace king suited like ace queen off is kind of a weird like but the like the one big thing there that, that like I think a lot of people miss is like ace ten off was pure fold. Yeah. This is fold. Oh, ooh. Eh, I guess that's right. Yeah. yeah. So here you should be folding queens. Ah, ha, ha. Jack. Fuck off. I'm never. I'm... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but also, too, they're like, there's enough future game there with queens. Like, the player never has kings and aces. Like, there's probably enough future game with doubling up there. You would be massive chip leader and stuff that, like, you probably shouldn't fold queens. Well, mm. Rip. Here? I'm jamming here. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is a rip. Yeah. Yeah. Jam. Matt, have you seen like the low like suited, uh, the low suited I, kings like hold I three bet, bet way too. I three bet small here, way too much. But this is probably a fold, or it's either fold or like at some frequency you get three bet small. I mean, uh, this is this is seventeen equal stack, so we're gonna be pretty aggressive into this guy because we can apply a, a mountain of pressure. I think it's probably I like fifteen percent three bet, fifteen percent three bet, and eighty five percent fold. It might even be less than fifteen percent. Huh? Yeah, I was at five is for the wheels. Yeah. Globally, though, it's nine nine point. Sorry, what was it about like suited kings? Uh, just like the three better cold four bet jams with low suited kings, like after goes bet call or something. So I think I fold this, but. Ooh, yeah. Uh, so th three suited kings after it goes three bet call or what was? It, Say it, one more time. Sorry. Galen, do you remember the, the scenarios we've seen with the so kings where it was just yeah, ripping yeah, yeah. in absurd spots? Well, so some of these, when there's high ICM pressure, and it's often like spots like this, it will pull from the suited kings targeting some of the trashy aces that are trying to see a flop. Um, and like even sometimes the queens, like it just, and it won't jam like... It won't do aces though. It won't do aces. So like we see weird ranges sometimes where it's like jamming all the suited kings instead of the suited aces. And um, uh, um, that's like I think it might have to be like the opening range is more ASEX heavy than KGX heavy. I think that's so exactly what it is. Like that would make some sense. Shove. I think. Yeah, I would definitely shove this. I would just call. No, this is shove. Ooh. It's a call. Okay, so like here, for instance, you see how like all of these suited kings and even some of the suited queens are just going bananas here. Yeah, like the suited aces are though too. They are. Um, there are a couple scenarios that we've come across that, like, some of these suited aces will actually fold. Like, huh. it, th there's some weird ranges, and I think it's yeah. um, 
I it think it's also be like they didn't run it down all the way or something, but as a Somebody general, wondered in the spots if it's not that um, the suited king has the same blocker value for blocking kings as the ace x has for blocking aces, but when it gets called, it's more often has two live cards if it ends up against ace queen, whereas like when your ace x gets called, it rarely has two live cards. I've wondered Maybe. if that's what's going on. It might be. Uh, I mean, it's more so like the ace x is more valuable when you're getting called by like kings plus versus mm -hmm. the wider the range gets like that's when the suited kings become more valuable like when uh, they start calling off like jacks tens queens maybe like, low frequency through that yeah Ooh, he's folded the so, is it, is it middle stack all in? Yeah. yeah yeah you just ship it raise Galen, if there were squeeze spots, maybe Asex blocks more call folds for the for the caller. I, I think it's got I think it's got stuff to do with that. I think it's just so like we were kind of touching on it earlier about like how Louis was saying nines and tens are bad. I think it's like some of these ICM sims. It's just the blocker effects are amplified the higher the risk yeah. premium is. It's so, also I think it's more I think you're on the right track, but I think it's more the the blocker effect. So it, it is driven by risk premium, but it's the call off range that is driving the blocker effect. So it has okay. to do with more like the, obviously like the tighter the call off range, the more important ace X is blocking ace king and aces and like having an over card to kings is really good when you get called by kings. So right. it's like how much of a percentage of the calling range is kings is kind of, I think what's driving a lot of that. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. It's so like the more, the, the tighter the range, the higher percentage of times it's kings, the more often you want to have an ace. The wider the call off range, like if it's spots with like nines and tens in it, the less value, like the less it matters having like an ace. So I'm folding because under the gun opened off 10 big blinds, so it's always aces. It's gonna, they're gonna say jam this. Yeah. Uh, right. I think this is gonna fold a lot, but like well, a jam. there's some jam, but like that flat is gonna have like jacks in it. Yeah, I'm it's just scared the about the flat. I'm scared about the open. <laughs> no, I'm the, the flat you should be more scared about than the. Nah. This has aces in it for sure. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, this range is. Oh, I'll be right back. I'm getting range. water. Okay. Woo. We're ahead of three combos mm -hmm. of king queen off. Rip. Matt, what is your I normal pregame warm up? Uh, he, he went to go get water. I Joey. like a raise. Oh. Nope, just raise. He'll, he'll be back though. King four raises. I feel like we went by it too fast, but there was the I think five big blind flat earlier where we flat with queens to induce. Um, I thought that one was really interesting and. Would love to keep an eye out for more spots like that. That's the most professionally kind way I've ever heard someone say, slow down, please, Louie. <laughs> do, you, do you guys want to do ICM or to be? Uh, I, I want to I do GTO Wiz. I, I kind of want to do Chip yeah. because I have no chance of making a final table today since <laughs> day one. Let's go. So we're going to check. Check, check, top card pairs. We have a hand that can lead, I think. I what do you think? I think this might be okay for like uh, a value bet. A three? Or he was he's he's, he's three. severely capped against when he when he misses his C bet. Um, oh, right, right. A bet two. Yeah, the, two? the rainbow yeah, like nature. The no, I, you can check this a decent amount too. Like the button's still going to have some 9x and stuff, and it's kind of mm -hmm. going to be hard to go for two streets yeah. a decent amount, but like betting's fine. Too. Yeah, this the is betting. a dynamic ball. I, I the bond's going to work at his 9x. But I think the, the betting strategy should be check or bet a bit bigger, like half pot or more. Yeah. A small bet is not really a thing here. Yeah, the rainbow nature of the board on the turn isn't going to lead to a lot of natural continues. So your response should be a little more polar. And we're kind of betting from the middle of our range here. So check, so check, think check, of... check. We value bet third pair. Why do, why, do you think, why do you think you bet here, Louis? On the river? To value yeah. that? I would bet. Yeah, here. Well, I, I would bet here too. And I would bet small. Bet folding is better than check calling. Well, I when you, ch I think when you check, the button's going to have a lot of bluffs and you're going to have a hard, harder time realizing your equity as opposed to maybe like controlling the pot with a small bet here where you can still get like called by his bluff catcher. Pocket sixes. It's more so that like when you check here and he bets, your hand is essentially turned into the same hand as queen high. Yeah, it's trash. And so you'd rather check with queen high rather than sevens, which can get called by worse hands. So there's yeah, more that's... EV embedding. 
then when you check and face a bet and turn your hand into a bluff catcher, the EV is zero, like inherently. Yeah, no, very nice. Oh, wow. I do too much bluff catching. I like so how you word check, it. Check, pair of board, high, low combo. This would, I would always check raise here. Feels like I, a good check raise. I like raising. I'd rather have I a 9 10 or jack. Really like raising this one. Yeah, I'd rather have, I think we have enough hands with a little more going on. Like this is going to raise some, but like, I, this is for sure. I think this raises less than half the time. I probably just oh, all. Yeah. Well, and it's a pair of board. We have the upper upper card, the upper dangler. Like this is a high. No, no, I agree. Yeah, those things, but I, I don't. I don't think it's going to be a pure raise or anything. And I think it would be less than. I just it's think there's like 30, we have enough yeah. interaction. Like here. We have a ton of like pair of eights. I think it's like, like twelve. Wow, it's a lot. Yeah, so there's still raise? a decent amount of raising. Yeah, but yeah. Can you look at the? Queen, queen, nine will be a lot more raises probably, right? Would they be pure raises? Queen, queen, nine? No, there's never, like, it's almost never going to be pure raise in that because the button has too much interaction. Back to a flush. So these high-low combos are getting after quite a bit. Yeah. What's fold? White? This white, white is fold. Yeah, white is folded. Jesus. Yeah. It's like just the opposite <laughs> of what I'm used to. Yeah, no, we complain about this all the time. Color. Just, you know, like, what psychotic person came up with this, Louis? <laughs> Louis? Oh, I'm going to change it for a year. Louis? Like, this He's is, Canadian. This yeah. is like actually psychotic. I know. <laughs> I wanted to like register a weird thing with the GTO wizard sim here. Um, these two check raise sizes that are so close to each other. Um, like, Matt, are you using two sizes here? Like, no. like they are? Never. I, I think no, it's no, bizarre. No. Yeah, it's just like how the sim must run. Like, I'm always yeah, just, just going to have I one size. I think it's a really or... poor choice. Like, I would, if I was going to do like, See, I would have raised more with like 10 4 suited. I would have chosen to raise like 10 4 suited a lot more than King 4. Well, the one thing I noticed like on pair boards, the upper dangler, so like King here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having an overcard, like, but having a 10 is pretty comparable to having a King. Cause like when you call their like most common hands can be like a pair of eights. So like you have an overcard to right. eight either way. Um, but like, yeah, like I'm not surprised at all that like King Four suited like checkers like these amount like I wouldn't have folded it, but um, yeah, I'm probably calling with it a little bit too much for sure. You say you yes. prefer the ten because no matter what uh, folds, it was beating you. Or He's just uh, no, He's just, just like having the extra equity of like the backdoor straight draw. Yeah, it, it chooses a smaller size when you have a king with a nine, a ten, or a jack because you're going to be able to barrel more often. And the king four benefits with the bigger size because it generates more full deck. So we went with check raise small. Uh, turn into like tough equity. I would go small. We want to hit it here. I, I think we really want to hit it. I'm like going 11. small. I'm going seven half or pot. I like half pot. I yeah. feel like we, like overall, I feel like our range checks a lot on this card. Um, obviously, okay. this combo kind of wants to bet, but I think like. I'm kind of curious here. So like we turn a lot of Jack X. That so, Jack X probably wants to check a lot here. Like I feel like our range is that wants to like our value range that wants to go here is like Queen X plus. I think well, it's like, equity, equity 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 equity. Equity. like which kind of makes me want to bet like eleven, but right up it's gonna be something between like eleven and seven. I probably would bet in between those two sizes. It's gonna be something between a seven and eleven. Um a lot here. Isn't seven like geometric though? Yeah. No, it'd be closer to eleven. Half pot yeah. would be if there was twenty-one. Um, Ge half pot is works one and a half SPR. Yeah, geometric works better about one third of the stack. So, so I would check here. Do you go for the do you go for the value or do you go for the check? To you go capture for the, the check. It's a pair of board. So essentially, here the question to ask yourself is like if if we shove. What's um, calling worse, right? I mean, like, this might do, like, a. I just don't know how much bet three we really want to do. I love bet three here. I mean, like, in practice, I like bet three, but it's, like, I don't think our range really, like, what's our value range here? It's, like. Yeah. Nothing bet three. Queen eight. <laughs> if you bet oh, three, how are you handling a raise with a hand like this? I mean. Me, I would fold. Fold. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you'd bet three with hands like queen jack I queen eight and stuff and you... uh, for me this is just a give up card I, li I like checking to be honest um, oh. yeah, more bet three i'm like not 
terribly surprised. But... So bet three, and then let's see. Bo he doesn't box us. We're good. But like so, so yeah, I don't know. Okay, hand to try. Is Maybe this not. like the normal like speed that you guys are going through stuff? Yeah. No, well, actually, this, really it, slowing it, it, down. I was gonna say it depends <laughs> on how uh... so like the way you guys are going through this right now. Um, I would say like there's not like there's value, but there's not this ton of value. Right. Okay. So like, like there, I would have immediately gone in like, what does the bet three range look like? You know, like, what is the value? Like a lot of spots I'm going, like what's like on the turn here is where I was really curious. Like on, I didn't know exactly. Like, so I'd want to check, like, I thought our range would be checking a lot on the turn. Mm -hmm. it's, like there's a decent amount of checking, but then I'm looking God, with gray check. So like, I like to use the <laughs> filters. <laughs> I really like to use the filters on the bottom, right? Okay. Above the ace deuce of hearts. Ace deuce of nope. hearts. No, no, no. no. Like filters. Uh, hand the summary check. filters blockers. To the right below where it says check. Yeah, a little boxes. bit down, 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 down. Right up, up, up. 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 There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. So like, I like to see this for like. So like, our full houses are checking, which makes some sense. Um. <laughs> Like, so we have a lot of second pair, like, like a lot of our Jack X that did, did turn wants to check. So that's like, good. I was kind of like on the mindset of like, so our range is like very polarized. That's betting here. Like it's basically straights and trips. Cause we're not betting Jack X and we're not betting eight X here on the turn. So right. that's why I was kind of was like 11 kind of makes like, cause we're betting more polarized. Uh, but I guess it's just driven down the size a little bit because, um, I'm assuming we're bet folding. Obviously, we're bet folding this combo too. But okay. um, I was curious if we check his flop and get a stone brick, which bluffs we're continuing. Yeah, like I think that's a very valid question. It's like these are the types of things that like like I'm looking at a lot because I'm looking for um Can just, you make it like an offsuit too, Louis? Like I'm like above? checking for understanding and more so. I'm checking for spots where I'm completely wrong mm -hmm. about stuff. Cause then when I'm completely wrong about something, I'll take note of it. And then like, I'm going to do a deeper dive into other things to find out if it's just like this one thing, or if it's um, like, for example, my webinar, the um, Wednesday, there was like a 20 big blind spot out of position C betting where I thought we'd be checking a lot. We were betting range. And so it's like, okay, so like I took note of it because I'm going to do some work on 20 big blind out of position, that's like interesting. C, C betting spots. So um, that's where like the value in like, I'm essentially like when I'm going through my trainer work, I'm going, it, it, it's so slow because I, I go into the sim after every single decision just to check for general understanding to make sure like I'm talking to myself out loud. Like, I think like our value range is X, like, and I'm asking like, oh, does this hand want to value bet? Eh. Like, uh, what's the bottom parts of my range for my bluffs? Like, I'm kind of like, it's a very like slow, like focusing on quantity over qual or quality over quantity, I think is really, 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 really important when doing this type of work to make it valuable. Right. Louis, so can we um way. can we take this turn and make it a two of clubs instead? Because we put a flush draw out there where we have it. Yeah. So like, uh, then, going to a brick in these spots is always a good place to start. Like, how do we apply on a brick? Straight wow. polarized. And like, I like I'm to go into the, like, the filter, awesome. like it's on a the filter. Bunch fil of straights. That's the first. And, thing and like, see. so here it's like a common question to ask yourself: is, So you check raise all this backdoor flush draw stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This is a rainbow flop, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So like all that backdoor flush draw stuff, not only miss, but it also blocks like the folds, like, cause you're trying to fold out backdoor flush draws. So you have a ton of air here. And so essentially here, like you're just betting trips or nothing. Like you're not betting eight X a lot. Like you don't really want to bet a at eight X really that much because you're not going to fold out 10, nine, Jack nine, Jack 10 anyways. And if you bet eight X, you're just bloating the pot. Um, a lot into a range that you literally could be drawing dead against. Like they can easily have queen X here. So you can see like checking a decent amount of queen X here, which I don't think I'm doing enough. And I don't think a lot of people do enough. Um, look at these, like more of the offsuit 
king x hands and i'm assuming these are ones with a club like these king sevens and stuff that are bluffing all over the place it seems can you go Bluffed back to the way. flop strategy why are these hands getting to this node like why is like king five off getting here that often go back to the So they're folding. Oh, there, there's a setting that uh, can you change the weight or whatever so that it doesn't show the. It's like a tiny sliver of the range, but it's showing the full weight. Oh, I got you. I got you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sorry. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense now. There we go. Um, sorry. It's just how it's. It's not a big deal if it's set like that. Like I'll I'll change it to that sometimes. But uh, I was just wondering how we had those hands. Yeah. So it's like, uh, this is why I use a filter. Like I just look, I like to look at the filter because I think it's a, a much easier, like we just basically have a polarized strategy of like trips. And then we have to be careful to like check enough trips here because we have so many like 8X hands that we want to help. So the reason for checking trips here is because you want to help get your 8X hands to show down. So you're sacrificing EV with your trips that are checking to increase the EV of your 8X hands is essentially what I think is going on there. Okay. And which makes sense. And then like, um, then obviously you have a few bluffs. So that's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting hand. What would you do here with the queen of spades? The queen of spades? Yes. Um. Mostly fold some raise. I, I'm deciding if it's mostly raise or most. Like it, I, I think it's going to mix fold and raise. Like obviously the ace of spades goes above there. We don't have much interaction. Um, so we have like very. So I, how I think about this is we have very little interaction on this flop, and then so then we're going to go into backdoor flush draw hands. So we have hands <laughs> with two hearts, two spades. Um, all the ace of spade hands are going to continue. So like the queen of spades would be next. So queen of spades nine for sure. It's continuing. And I'm curious how far down into the Queen of Spades hands we go. I'm going to guess it raises more. I'm guessing every folds. Queen of Spades. Um, I think like, I'm, I, I think like, like you have like Jack of Spades nine, Jack of Clubs nine of Spades and stuff. And those hands will go ahead of Queen of Spades five, I'm guessing. Oh, really? But yeah, because they have a backdoor straight draw to go with it. And uh, every Queen here. Would it also be because yeah. they're both above middle pair? And then a jack nine, yeah, jack nine more than the queens. Yeah, we're right. yeah so let's still go down. Like, like, hold on, is it folding the queen of spades? All the que those queen of spades? Uh, no, they're playing. Yeah, yeah. So they are calling some too, which is kind of interesting. Kind of, I don't do enough. Like they're not pure raises, but spade hard is the pure raise. Oh, losing EV. Well, they're, they're using EV as all in, so. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, but like you see, like they're really, really like they're point zero two. Um, so like they're obviously very thin. But like this is a board that's gonna get like probably raising generates more EV because they're probably not gonna call enough. Ooh, even the nine of spades can play a little bit. Like I would have raised nine of spades six, nine of spades seven, those types <clears throat> of hands before queen of spades four. Well, King Eight Deuce, our opponent should be range betting here. You know, ninety five yeah. percent of, of hands, right? That is your yeah. uh, is your like mnemonic, your shortcut to find the nine six nine seven um, three to a straight, three to a flush. That's yeah. one that we're often looking for here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so fold this one. Play the Queen of Spades. I'm check raising here. Yeah? Mm, how much? How much? Like. Are you like pure one hundred percent check raising there? Yeah, Louis oh, is. Like, so like yeah, the, the, a general here <laughs> on a rainbow that... board. On a rainbow board, it will for sure. Like this hand probably pures check raises. I'm not sure this hand is strong enough to pure check raise here. Like I'm guessing, if I had to guess here, it's probably like a, I don't know, thirty percent or something like that. Like intent, it, like as a general rule on like the two tone board, you need a smaller queen to check raise. It's so, pretty aggressive. Yeah, so it's like 80%. Like, yeah. Yeah. So what we've seen like is like sub 40 big blinds typically like. Yeah. It's a lot of top pair. I thought um, I was thinking that it would need to be 
more like have a spade or a heart blocker in there to block some of the backdoor flush draw continues and stuff but to, to be honest though i'm not this aggressive in actual game with my top pairs no yeah. and nor top should pair. like if you run this at like 40 percent of the field left i doubt this queen 10 check raises so that's right. an interesting top question pair man. that's a what very that? interesting question uh how how would you adjust with like 50 percent of the field here based on this set? or say you're on a final table like Dude, we, well, we've told you this a million times like sizes get smaller and you don't play as aggressively yeah you, yeah, you end up like not check raising even like ace 10 here some he wants to hear it from like, the man like you 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 would lean more towards wanting to have a spade in your hand um and like queen 10 is just going to have pretty poor equity against the get in range so i would just pure call in those situations okay what about the king 10 Probably the same, and then like like with a spade, maybe it check raises a little bit. Um, it's hard to know. I've I've been tempted about maybe trying to do some work on some post flop, like forty percent of the field stuff left. But that would be uh, really interesting because we don't have any guides. We don't have any models for that. And yeah, I mean, it's basically we are always just, arguing basically about it because we don't have any solution. So I, I have a question, Matt. If you're going to do some forty percent of the field work. What would your process be for that? Because I've done some comp I've done some comparative analysis stuff for us, but like, okay, like with Pio, the ICM models only have like final table adjusted stuff, right? So yeah, see, so like that's where I, I, I like I've I've ran some ICM stuff and Pio and stuff, but um, like you can export like this. I don't have the computing power to run like forty percent pre-flop ranges mm -hmm. in HRC, like I have access to to like 40% of the field left ranges and stuff. So uh, we, could, but... we could generate those ranges with HRC. I mean, we have the capabilities to do that. Make like the there's a way ranges. in HRC you can export the whole ICM model to Pio. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. here as well, like 50% <clears throat> field, here you go. Yeah, like, I, like I'm familiar with these ranges and stuff. And like, I feel like these are the ranges a lot of times like I feel like it's a lot more valuable to be working with these ranges more so than chippy V stuff because you play so much more of the tournament with this. Yeah. However, a lot of the tools don't have post flop training with this type of stuff. And so that's, I think, kind of the next evolution. So it's like, I know what it does on the extremes. Like, I know kind i have like the yeah and then if you know what you do is in the extremes like you can kind of fudge it for the middle stuff like it's more important to kind of know the extremes rather than um the middles like the extremes right. is easier to study study and then it's easier to like kind of fudge it in the middle right in okay. my opinion yeah, yeah just I run mean, an interpolation function in your brain yeah <laughs> we've i mean we've kind of been doing that like like I said, like we understand the behavior at final tables, how it behaves post flop. Like it's not going to be nearly as aggressive, and sizes are smaller, et cetera, et cetera. So and we spoke a, we spoke a little bit about the raising range, right? Uh, you raise less, blah 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 blah. That that's fine. Do you do you adjust your calling range with like second pair here, like a bad second pair? That is supposed like. What do you want to do? Do you want to fold? <laughs> yes. No. Why would you no. want to? <laughs> well, if you like Bert Steven, he's gonna say he's gonna advocate for a fold like second. I guarantee pair you, Bert will never say to fold to a two big blind bet here from the button with second pair of nines. Well, the thing he says is like, what are we gonna do uh, against a turn barrel with but a nine? Or... Like it's one of those things you just deal with it. Like it's something that's only gonna happen like half the time, anyways. I think okay. the idea is like the adjustments that you make should be post flop. Once you've kind of, I'd be like, very, very, very surprised if Bert was folding to a two big blind bet in this situation in Chip EV. No, no, well, I see final table. We're talking about I see final table. Oh, okay. Well, um, oh, I thought we were talking. It's 40%. still a call. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like your stack is not at risk here calling two big blinds out of forty at a final table. Yeah. It's wow. not like people think like this ICM, like means you have to play super tight. It doesn't. It just means you go into like, like you can still play a lot of hands pre-flop. You're just not three betting. You're like flatty with like queens and kings, which like when you're starting to flat kings pre-flop or queens pre-flop, that allows you to flat jack nine suited because you're protected. Your range is, you can't get squeezed when you have like kings in your flatty range. All right. So, so th this is like the solution for 25 big blinds. Say we are shorter. 
Where, yeah. where it's closer, like uh, what are we? I mean, like, look at the EV. It's like making three big blinds. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Like, it's it's. You have a really strong hand. Oh, Matt. Nine six did lose EV, but it's still pretty high. Matt, is it, it a good general? Is I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ken. No, go ahead. Is it a good generalization just to think that you're doing more pot controlling in deep ICM? Um, I don't know if I like to think about it that way. It's probably like it's it's you're you're not wrong at all. I think it's more. I like. I guess it's just how I think about it. It's more the equity thresholds for value betting increase. So, um, in that way, you're checking back hands that would normally be value bets. Um, I just hate the word pot control. Okay. I guess that's more my <laughs> that that's more me not liking the terminology. Uh, um, playing a little bit more passive uh it's sure yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it's it, you, it's more polarization because the so equity me, threshold is higher so tell me if like this is a, a reasonable like thought approach to this like the way i kind of think about it is i try to get a bearing on what the risk premium of the scenario is and i adjust my like aggression threshold and my calling threshold basically roughly that same percent so like if the risk premium of the scenario, let's say at, I don't know, 5% of the field left, I'm going to estimate maybe a 5% risk premium or something. Okay. So I'm going to adjust my calling threshold by about 5% globally and maybe adjust my aggression, the hands that I go aggressive with up about 5% globally. <laughs> Um, sure, that's one way. Like, I don't have an argument for or against that. How I think about it is pulls me in the cutoff and I have 40 big blinds, and there's five percent. Like, and I'm looking at the like, if everyone has 20 big blind stacks, 25 big blind stacks, I'm asking myself, this is what I want to expand or contract my range, right? Yeah, yeah probably yeah. I want to expand a little bit. Like, it's kind of like both kind of there because you have rejam stacks and there so like maybe it's like equal so i'm probably opening like no tighter than like 35 percent there but like um if i have 20 big blinds and they all have 40 it's probably a spot i want to contract my range so i'm going to be right. opening tighter so like that's kind of the basis of how i'm thinking about these spots so so say your final table you get post flop and you against you and another bigger stack at the table there's a bunch of stacks say like have half your chips are you like cautious post flop with your marginal stuff not to drop say to like you don't really want to i'm saying i'm asking would you are you risk adverse so to not drop below the other lower stacks um not really how I think about the game in terms of like, I think more about the decisions rather than like the, I'm not going to change from a plus EV decision to a negative EV decision just because of how it's going to affect my future. Yeah. There. So it's more like um, just like the amount of the, like I think you guys are overthinking it a little bit in terms of just the, um, risk premium is going to affect what your equity thresholds are and the equity thresholds are basically what can you value bet and so in situations the risk premiums are higher your equity threshold for value betting maybe goes on the river goes from like a 70 percent <coughs> hand or a 75 percent hand to a 85 or 90 percent hand all right it's just thinking so about you're you're more. you're you're going much more polarized and then since you're so this is where like I don't know. I bluff catch a ton final tables because like people kind of know they should pot control more, but they also just go, well, they have to fold if I bet. So they end up like people also like you have to a lot of times be very constrained in what hands you bluff um, in the like final table spots. So yeah, I bluff too much I'm... on the fish you're just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I saw some shenanigans yesterday with regards to that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's good. All right. You're going to throw, oh. throw another hand up there? Yes.
So like this is a spot I'm not gonna raise. I'm probably gonna play check again. And lead some. Lead some, yeah. So like this is a spot like I would be going in the sim to look at like our leading strategy a lot there. Because like for example, like Galen, you said check again and it was betting quite a bit here. It and was. So this is yeah. So is it because so like, he's betting our range a lot is betting like 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 queen is not an ace, it's not a king. Um, we have a lot of hands that want to bet for like, so we're doing a lot of small betting. You can see here, like it's, Probably. yeah, it's mostly like, it's betting like one big blind, like 1.2. So it's not as a big of a deal than if it was betting like two or three big blinds, because betting 1.2 is similar, very similar to checking. So it's not worth a ton. Like checking is probably fine. So like, that's one thing I would look at here and just like starting to look at here, like how much nine X is betting, how much like five X is betting like quite a bit. So I'd go to filters here. That's just how I visually like to look at it, like by hand category. Like it's a lot of second pair, a lot of third pair, a lot of low, low pair. pairs. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty interesting. And, and like the, what uh, makes me curious is like, I would think they're betting more queens on the flop than say aces. Yeah, it's not like an ace or like you can change the turn to a king or an ace. Like we're, we're checking 45. We're going to check a lot more on a king. I would think so too. Like the ace is almost going to be a range check. Like, yeah, like it, that, that makes sense. And then like, right. Like the king of clubs. Obviously Maybe like, like 70% like, now. Yeah, probably seems reasonable. Yeah, oh, still betting quite a bit. Yeah. So with the nine on the board, I imagine they're C betting a lot of their king X, queen X, jack X, 10 X, and uh, checking more ace X on the flop probably. Yeah, I mean, the nine here, they're going to be checking back a decent amount on, like, the 5-4 combination. Like, 9 five, 4 has a decent amount of checks. Like, what do you think the C betting frequency is here for you in position? On the uh, flopper, on polar, the It's going to be a somewhat polarized bet, I 50%. Imagine. Yeah, I think they're betting, like, yeah, sure, something 40, 50%. Uh, I mean, 60, 60, I was thinking in checking, like, 60 to 50% seems <clears> reasonable. <throat> it's like a lot of the overcard hands are checking. So, yeah, I was a little bit surprised to see that much King X, but there's a lot more like weak Ace X than there is weak King X. Well, I'll be right back. I'm going to make a coffee. Okay. <laughs> Not too shabby. So, what Matt's saying is our Supreme Leader should slow down. <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> He's told that yeah, 10 I times that a day. Point. I know, I know, I know. That's that's basically uh, the takeaway I got too, Nicola. Be more. <laughs> well, we used to do that. Now. The first six months, we dove so deep into everything, right? <laughs> now it just feels like he knows the heuristics so yeah, well. Yeah, the, the turn through. heart. I'm sorry, guys. The king four. I knew that one in the back of my mind. I knew what turn exact to fire. Uh, I mean, I'm going fast because I think I know it, but of course, like I'm wrong. But well, like, even if you think you do, some of us don't. Like, yeah. I'm dumb, so I need at least ten minutes to think about what to do. Yeah, that's part of it. Like with a group, everyone will have different things they want to think about, and it makes it tough to explore every. Don't every click thought. anything. This is pretty spicy. <laughs> you want to leave? So, that's so it. I mean. Do it's, three, maybe not. I don't know. I want to lead. It's, no, I don't really want to lead, but it seems like a good combo to check raise, right? Yeah. So check deuce, raise. I think the deuce will be less popular than yeah. like than like if, like if it was a three or four, six three, four, or seven. Three, four, seven, maybe. Um, I think it'll be minor frequencies of lead. And I mean, if you were gonna lead, this has got some pretty attractive properties, right? So what percentage of our range do you think is leading here? Eight. Uh, I was gonna say maybe like 10 to 20 or something okay yeah i'm in like the 15 ballpark <clears throat> yeah leads i'm yeah. five five percent yeah so we were yeah. saying like with the deuce it's going to drop the frequency down a little bit if it was a pip higher let's say like a six four three it would be a, a much more attractive spot but this spot will still have leads and this would be an attractive combo to lead with I yeah i think there's crazy. two things going on there one is that we don't have lots of these two pairs neither player does and the other piece is that like um, wheel is a very strong hand here, and button has it, and like yeah, a lot yeah, of the other leads. So it's like a lot of the advantage actually. comes from our six know four off and five. I'm sure, X. there's leads. I'm sure there's a few leads, but not a ton. As you get to earlier positions, there will be some leads. Right. Well, so, but like, so like this is a spot like Louis. Like 
you have to go look at the sim at this spot. Yeah, what? Because like this showed like a nine percent lead for this hand, but like I would always, I, like I'm more concerned with what the global strategy is here. Yeah. Like, My right. guess is that with the three and the dos, there's not much leading. Yeah, like I could see both. Are, yeah, I mean, and against button, I didn't expect to. Yeah, it was early position. So yeah, it's like essentially it's just a check range spot. And say okay. we moved it up one pip to we three, four, one of the... uh, three, four, six. Three, four, yeah. I think we, we lead a lot. Yeah, I, I think, think we, a lot we will raise. So the... leading it increases as you get uh, more straights available. So like here you have the ace deuce and the seven, six and the six deuce. So the more straights possible. And also here you made it rainbow instead of two tone. So rainbow, there's more leads than two tone. Right. So those are like the two factors you got pulling here. So you only had two straights on the last board, and now you're putting three straights on this one. Yeah. And you 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 made it rainbow instead of two-tone. Yeah. Right. The two-tone nature is gonna make his continuing range more threatening. So like that's why I think you get yeah, it's a just higher easier, easier to continue for him. Um I kind of want to continue for how big do I want to go? About like I want to go three three point three five. That's I was going to say three. Oh, I don't know that that wants to check. Oh, one point two. Wow. Oh, I I hate check. What percentage are we betting here? Probing. Third I'm range. guessing eighty like percent. Sixty or no, like ton, yeah. Forty or fifty. It's so it's, it's gonna be 80. really hard to bet eighty Thank because <laughs> it went check check on the flop. So like yeah. you just have too much garbage in your range for it to ever be that high. It's almost like the probe. It's really hard for the probe to get. The highest you'll see is like, if the flop is like six five four turn seven then you'll see like some 60 to 70 percent probes but it's pretty hard for it to get like above that just because you have you have to remember until you take a, a passive action of fold your range is just too weak in the big blind mm. didn't we find some range range turn leads last time when we were looking at that yeah we did turn probe oh we have to call no other option Raising? I'm curious if it would ever raise, but I'm, I mean, my standards would be call. There might be a slower of raise. Uh, six kicker, probably not. Seven kicker, we do it. I mean, it's just we have a straight draw with mm, it. I think you'd be more likely to raise with the six than the seven. Oh, yeah. Nine. Well, like why nine would, six is a better hand than nine seven because yeah. why would you they never have nine the, eight? So there is a little seven. Yeah, why would you prefer a little bit there. Yeah, Why would you prefer seven point. though? Um, because in general, when you look at what kicker you're check raising on the flop, the cusp is always around the seven. So, so you're just guessing. You don't. It, you don't think it has to do something with his bluffs coming from six? Or, no, seven. I think we need. I think it will probably be like go to the buttons range. Right? I'm guessing the six. Has, I'm guessing it has more to do with what's bluffing here. That's what I thought. Like the the ra bluff raises come from 10 6, jack 6, queen 6. That's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's referring to 7. Right. Because like, so, in general, you're going to shove, when you're raising here or shoving here, you're going to choose the higher equity hand. But here, right. it so you, blocks the you don't want to block the bluffs. So you're pushing them towards value naturally. And um, yeah, you want to kind of control no, it. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And the 6 and a 4 can make straights. Can I make a request for a spot? Yeah, let's go. Let's see. How I want to do like deep stack three betting out of position. Yeah. Let's go. I want like go. 80 big blinds, small blind versus. I'm playing some live, uh, I'm playing some live cash tonight, so uh, I need to look at some of this. Oh, uh, watch the video I posted. And... No, no, small blind, small blind. I am going to watch it. Right. I am going to watch it. I uploaded it to the. Uh, the so can we look at the ranges right. first, please? I want to see like so like the small line three bet from the, just like tens plus a lot of offsuit queens, suited broadways, some board coverage stuff. Are mm -hmm. you going ten point three? I wouldn't go that big at this step. We're at a position. Yeah, yeah I'm so, going no yeah. smaller Nine, than ten. Nine's enough. Really? So I kind of like I would go X. ten, but yeah, 10, it doesn't I matter. Think... It doesn't matter that much. Like it's going to change the range, yeah. but offsuit queens. Can... Super... If you look up PFA, their range, their raise sizings are even bigger, I think. Yeah. All right. Ranges are pretty so, close here because, like, imposition is so flatting, like, some big hands. Uh, so call, and then there's a button to. Oh, yeah, there it is. 
I bet studying cash games has ruined me for three bet spots. <laughs> All right, so random flop, and no, you just want to three bet. Don't have the small line check. Click so on the flop, click, I think. Yeah, yeah, click the flop node. Uh, there we go, yeah. Um, ace high, two tone here. I, I mean, I'm gonna bet this a lot, small. probably for small size. I was gonna... I'm just trying to see if we're gonna range. Like, we gotta have a. We probably actually, I think kings and queens and jacks still bet to get value from small pairs. So, <laughs> ace low, low. I think we're betting very, yeah. very frequently. Yeah, I think it's just pretty quarter close to or a range bet for a quarter to a third. I was I would, thinking. Uh... I would go half pot, but. Hmm. I don't. I think we, if we're range betting with kings and queens and jacks and stuff, I don't think we want a half yeah. pot here. That's some yeah. Tenth. You can build like a, yeah, they, they use the 10% here a lot, but. So the seven is a pretty heavy I blank. Sure. I just want to make happen. sure we're actually, are we actually range betting here? No, so there's like a decent amount of check, like kings and queens and jacks and tens. Mm -hmm. I thought like those hands would still want to get value from like the smaller pairs, but yeah. Can you go to buy a high card? Group grouping by high card, yeah. So low cards and then like king high boards at best. I mean, all the broad word. Any high card board, decent amount of betting. Mm -hmm. Checking on the low card boards, as expected. Gee, can you filter by? Um... Do you use this portion here? Because I really like it. Like you can see here, ace low low. It's mostly gonna be like a bet small. Whereas when it's like uh, these are going to be like uh, two broadways, you're betting any two cards, right? So your checking range comes from ace low low. Is that giant and, spike not ace low low? The giant blue spike for uh, le or a lot of this, these are paired kings. kings. Paired That's kings. the paired kings. So I really it's like to use that little tool here. You can see the yeah, checking range cool. comes from here, from here, and then nine high boards or lower. Yeah, so like the ace high high. Is getting bet more than I thought then because all your suited broadways and stuff like all your yeah. your bluffs connect on those. And boards. you see, like best board king i, second best board ace i, third queen i. No, mm -hmm. jack i is better than queen i. Jack yeah, I and i position better. has. Like, Wait, do we still have these um, overbet jams like on the? Uh, oh yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack ten. Those are just one fifty, but connected. I wouldn't really. All right, so bet small. Do you double barrel here? I would not. Me either. This hand's awful. Having hearts is like the worst suit for betting here. Yeah. So, so is our range going to be polar here, though, when we do bet? Probably. Like, I don't think we necessarily want to be betting. Like, ace 10 maybe bets sometimes, but it probably doesn't want to bet that often. But um, the range is going to be we, we, could probably, we could probably bet smaller, though, to include some of those. I'm kind of interested to see, like, this is these are the spots here on, like, the turn and where I get so, like, a little lost. But I know this hand, I think, wants to, like... So, like, are we going to go check if not pure? I would probably pure. I would just pure check this because having hearts is the worst. Do you guys think Surrender. we're going to check a ton on this uh, turn? Because we have still have kings, queens, jacks. We have so many bluffs and very few value hands to where our range doesn't really benefit. From. Well, I'm wondering if we bet small enough where we can still bet like queens and stuff. I wouldn't do it in practice because people are going to fold too much. But uh, I think it's worth looking at for sure. I would check like very, very often. Even like ace queen check, like, I would be checking just to balance. Yeah, I think the range is pretty polar here. I think ace queen's gonna want to bet for sure. But yeah, you're checking 70% still. Yeah, so like 70% betting. Um, go to the filters. I mean, it's just checking like half our ace X. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's mostly the weaker ones. Mm -hmm. And then um Starting to bluff some seven X, which makes some sense, but we don't why really is, know that much. Why is Queen Jack student betting? Probably a flush draw. Uh, it's probably spades and it's clubs and diamonds, and it's blocking the ace queens and ace jacks, which are the strongest ace X that they have. So, like ace queen off and ace jack off are going to be the two strongest offsuit ace X that they have. So, that's why it's using that a lot. So, like hearts bets the least. Um. Yeah, I'm guessing that's that has a lot to do with it. Inter interesting to me, we're checking ace king more than ace queen. 
I'm guessing because there's um, king high floats from imposition that we dominate. So it just blocks, like, those are the hands that are folding. It's going to be king highs. Mm. And That's king smart. six suited was bluffing pure, right? Is that what I saw? Yep. A sliver, but yeah. It's kind of like King's value. Old. It's kind of like bluff protection, kind of merging. Fucking sets, two pairs. This is a tough spot. This is kind of tough because, um, I mean, we we have no showdown really, and we could get folds from spades sometimes. Like, uh, do you ever go, go back to the rule? Did you pick up equity on the turn? No. So your bluff is shutting down. No, but we're it's like this is a different bottom note. of the range now. Yeah, it's like we're gonna be bluffing from stuff that unblocks his the stuff he continues to flop with. So spades, you don't want to have a spade here to bluff, and then I'm gonna bluff from the bottom of the deck up. So this he is went pretty low went check, in my check. range. Yeah, it went check check on the turn. So it's like we I think we will maybe bluff from this sometimes. Does just... he not have every a six in his hand like ace five, ace four, ace three? Do like you want to block queens now? I mean, we'll, we'll, but we'll still we'll still have a six in range though too that wants to go for value, and we'll have pocket queens yeah. to get there. So yeah, I mean, like, like what our value range here is like, almost all our a six can go small here. It's kind of weird that I don't like that it has like three and a half and twelve as a mm -hmm. size, and it's kind of a big gap. But like, like ace nine can for sure value bet here small. Like a six is like basically our value range here i think this hand is really really tough because yes it's low in our range but hearts is like the worst suit to bluff with here mm. you block like king jack of hearts jack ten of hearts True. like those types of hands so right so it's somebody, kind of two things like down. i find this very difficult in terms of uh it's low in our range, and we, we block ace jack offsuit, but they don't really have ace jack ace nine offsuit. Hey, it's not so that like, low in our range because we bluff much worse combos against them, no? Uh, I mean, it's not so a what's lot the of worse hands than this because they're all yeah. What's the hands. worst hand? What's the worst like, hand? We're gonna have some like king seven offsuit, king six, king eight That's offsuit. A pair. I mean, those are pairs. We don't have king we eight don't offsuit. Have king eight offsuit in range. So what if you had jack nine of clubs? I might, I would appear bet Jack Nine. Of okay, okay, here. okay. And okay. Jack Nine of Diamonds. I probably yeah. It's like um, I find it very tough. Like I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if the sand bets, but um, I think we have. I'm not sure if we have enough, too much air, to um, have to control, so. Just say, like the general thing I'm going off of is, is like as a simple rules here is I know hearts are going to be bad, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. be surprised if this pure checks, but I also wouldn't be surprised with bets if it's just because it's so low. So that's where I'm a little bit. It could be the bottom of the range, but in my mind, whenever we don't pick up, well, a lot of those hands that you just highlighted over are barreling turn like 10 9, 10 8. Yeah, those types of hands are going to barrel the turn more, and they're only suited combos, so it's only four combos each. Right. So those worst hands, Louis, did pick up equity with the seven, like as yeah. a gut shot or an open ender. Yeah, so this so is this is a give up and low. the other ones are a fire. Is that my right? Maybe. I think you might fire this one. Like, like this is probably gonna right. bet like I'm gonna guess this is like I don't know. It it bluffs it's, I think it's gonna bluff some percentage of the time. I wouldn't be surprised if it's check. I'd be very surprised if it bluffed a hundred percent. So of the before time. we click anything, What's... like I'm going twelve here with my bluffs and my value. Is there Yeah, that makes different? some sense. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes I get to these spots, I don't know what size to go, and I just end up giving up. Well, it's like, what's your value range? So, so I, that's to answer the that thing, question. Right? Your value is going to want to be big, no? Um, no, I don't think you want to go that big here, because, like, in position still probably checks back ace-jack a decent amount on the turn. Um, probably checks back, it has ace-queen sometimes on the I turn. I bet 12, I get called by queen-jack of spades. Like, I think, like, a lot of our ASX wants to go 12 here. Maybe, like, I find it kind of hard. I don't think it can go really 20. I, think there's, I still think there's going to be a lot of check on this river. Like, What, what size do you use for a busted spade? Here? I'm team 20. I'm not betting my spades uh, ever. Spades yeah, are like trash. Spades, I probably wouldn't be bluffing that much. Yeah, Nine ten of like, spades, you don't bluff? No. No. You want him to have you're, nine ten. You're blocking. Spades. Like, yeah. you need him to have spades. I think nine ten of spades is. I think like the king of spades is a really bad card to have because like this player is going to have like king of spades jack. 
but like nine, ten of spades, you don't block as many of the one spade combos. But so you see sometimes the low spades bluffing, but I think I'm, gonna say, too, right? I'm guessing this mostly checks and then I wouldn't be surprised to see some bet 12. All right, let's see. Yeah, so, so it's, it's 20. So it's 20. Uh, yeah. Wow. Or, or check. There's a bit of so silver. I'm guessing what that means size, then is, really. is that we're not we're not bluffing with we're not value betting ace eight. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, I mean we still have ace king, ace queen, ace jack in range. Yeah, I mean I'm guessing they do too. But imagine you bet ten percent here and it gets through. <laughs> yeah, so like ace seven, ace six is checking. Um, ace five, like those are betting like three and a half. Like I'm not surprised to see some three and a half. Um. Ace queen checking. I'm actually not surprised to see that or bet small. I thought that might be the case. Mm -hmm. Kings is betting small, but like ace jack wants to go big ish. Ace 10. Nine, ten is eight. Eight. I was yeah, so the small yeah. spade. Like I'm guessing king jack does not want it. Won't, like king jack offsuit is going to be bluffing without a spade. I'm guessing. Like the king jack offsuits that are bluffing, it's going to check with the king of spades and bet without the spade. You highlight so over the king jack off. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, it still bets with the king of spades some. Just like the jack of spades. It. Just ripping it. Because it blocks like their ace king and ace jack offs. Mm hmm Right. Like it's gonna be it's hard like we have for to, them be, to have a hand strong enough. We gotta be fairly constrained with the can you um make it back to the weights, please? I yeah, I was just thinking that too. I want to see how six and eight seven are not there. Yeah, they bet. So like, there's some ten eight checking, some ten nine. Like, I'm just seeing if there's if we're checking any unpaired. Like, so like king nine's checking, king ten's checking. Like, we still have to be a little bit constrained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have this uh, ten percent jam in your strategy? Like with jack eight of diamonds, are you are you just ripping it? Oh, for like two x. Yeah. Hello. Not really, but it's Hi. probably fine. I don't have this in my game. I'd have like pot here, maybe a little bit bigger. I mean, I can just tell you that you're getting called by ace jack. So that's like the reason it's choosing the jack x hands. Mm -hmm. Like, you see when you jam here, what's called you? That's all it's uh, like the, the way to find the bluffs is ask, asking yourself, what's going to call me? And it's probably going to be. Um, Good question. Like some of these queen, I bet you like if you do this, like like if we check and face a bet, like what are gonna be the hands you want to like? What's gonna be your like check jamming strategy, check raising strategy? To me, well, we want to kind of spoiled a jack. Or I was gonna queen. say it's queen x hands. I'm guessing. Mm. Blocking ace queen ace jack. Uh yeah, I mean like. I think I, I feel like, like blocking queens and ace queen is going to be the most important. If I had like jack queen of diamonds, I would check raise. Nine eight's kind of interesting. I would have chosen the queen x hands over it. I would have checked jam like queen jack queen ten, king queen. Not a spades though. I'm not doing it with spades. It's... Uh, they shouldn't bluff with spades. So, but a lot of people don't uh, know that. So, yeah, like, right. that's kind of like now spades are fine to do it with. Um, we can move along. Nick, the 2x pot could be fun like early in tournaments because I feel like people don't like to fold as much and then you can get yep. big so stacks that's the too when you I have value. Alright, so queen high, three deuce, queen high dry, like I would be uh, tempted to bet small here just I'm because he's going to have a he's going to have a hard time continuing like you get honest information I think but oh. I, could, I could see checking being a very reasonable thing to I mean we're checking like 30 to 40 percent of range right on the queen low i mean queen knife boards check a lot but having the three and the deuce i mean hijack does have threes and deuces this probably checks more than we think like my it's first checking. instinct was bet but was bet five but it probably just check checks a decent amount but check some but um i, I like i like you said the rainbow nature and the three and the deuce um so here though the three and the deuce like it does but it does help connect with like they have threes and deuces and we don't um, mm -hmm. so it like, does... there's still like just not a lot of check like there's just not like like what hands want to range check here it's like nine eight the of trash. clubs like yeah you're like bit. absolute trash and that's like generally the case out of position that your trash just wants to check it's not like you know rocket science here 
like out of position generally you 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 don't want to bet with clubs here as much like so we played it as a check or we we're going to play it as a bet okay well bet big i would have never done that uh you're smoked well <laughs> good good game matt are you not in the impression like the deeper stack you are, the more big bets you got here? It's mostly a big bet strategy, I think, here. Yeah, yeah. This I'm probably not bet betting, betting um, big enough here. I mean, like, um, I especially wouldn't have done it with tens. Um, yeah, like, Jack's, I'm... Jack's I mean, it's just getting large. called, I guess, enough by, like, smaller pairs. I'm betting um, small here if I bet. Like, I, I Yeah, I would have transitioned small. mostly to a small size here. Um I just something... think it's an efficiency deal also. Like, if yeah, they're it's not like defending, getting, right? It's, like, like it's the... weird that, like, 10 still wants to bet big when you're getting eights and sevens or just folding to the big bet. I think some of it's like an MDF thing for the solver, though. Like, the solver's obviously going to be more sticky than, like, what you're actually playing in real life. So I think it's it just, may just benefit yeah. from the bigger bet a it's little bit more. It's just the board than... is dry enough that it's all about what is your – it's – what's the equity against – what is your hand's equity against the continuing range? And the, the, they're forced yeah, to continue okay. with enough ace high backdoor flush draws, like ace seven suited and ace eight suited, probably. All the ace so, wheels, too. Yeah. Like, well, ace wheels are like, you're not doing that great against like ace four hearts or whatever. Like, yeah, but they're not making a mistake. Like, like is ace eight of hearts continuing or ace nine of hearts continuing versus big bet? Yeah. First. Uh, here. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it's mixing fold. Like those are hands you don't really want to fold out. So it's mm -hmm. like interesting. Like I wouldn't have found the big bet with like tens, um, like queen extra, like king queen stuff like that. But oh, I'm definitely checking on the ace turn. Yeah, we're smoked here. I think too much. Like his marginal continues just got better. This probably. I'm curious if this calls any because like we dominate all the bluffs <laughs> are gonna uh, the I bluffs are gonna come from small pairs here. Uh, I'm, I'm hard, over folding. Right? But like I'm, I'm folding here, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like, yeah, yeah. I I'm not like. Oh, he yeah, got us! Got... Wow, he called that flop with king six. So this is definitely a big bet for me. What about you guys? Nine, yeah, seven four. We're gonna be checking fairly often here. Check um, raise some too. This hand is never checking. Yeah, I'm not checking. Uh, I think it's gonna check. Uh, maybe I'll like disagree. twenty percent. Big bet. I, I think it's gonna check some for sure. Like I would have bet okay. half pot. You um, guys are pretty close. Okay. It's just we like we look? can't. We can't. Sorry, I'm always like I look at the the, the strategy after every like here, mm -hmm. like when I'm guessing. Like otherwise, I'm just guessing. No, man, this is this is this is good. Drive it into his brain. <laughs> Please, yeah. Keep going. You guys got to be like. This in my mind, nine eye board like this. It's always gonna be a big bet. It is, but you have to have checks too because it doesn't connect well with your range. It's better because right, for... like a lot of the strategy here is too is like when we check, they're probably gonna be betting like. 55% of the time, and then you're putting in a check raise with like king of spades, queen, and stuff. Like, like the other heuristic we know is like that he's not bet big, is like we know we're betting generally the tens and jacks bigger, and like your jack x, 10x sure. bluffs. Like, go, go to like king, queen off, and stuff. Yeah, like the, these hands start to love to like want to check raise. Um, with the spade. Yeah, ace jack. Loves to check raise here. Queen Jack of Hearts. What are we doing with? Like, I'm probably check calling those too often. Queen Jack of Hearts, like yeah, pure check raise. So like I kind of did the webinar on this. Um, Front door, back door. Um, Wednesday, the playing out of position was talking about like these similar spots like cut off versus button. Like these are all the same hands that you choose to check raise. Like King Ten, King Jack. Like it's choosing mostly like King Ten. Might even do it without a spade sometimes. Like, go to king 10. You want to not have a heart here also when you check raise. Like, so, like, um, aren't they checking most of their uh, hearts on the flop? Like, the backdoor flush draw? Uh, yeah, but in reality, I don't think they do. Okay. They, they think backdoor flush draw is better than not backdoor flush draw. Ooh, I, action uh... killer. That smaller check. Check. We're gonna be checking a ton yeah, if we here. Big, I'm checking. His range is heavily seems constructed like, around suited. Seems stuff. like like our range is gonna check a lot, but like this is still like the hand that needs a shit ton of protection and stuff. Yeah, value. Uh, can we look? Can you go to the solve there on the turn? 
like these are the spots like so i'm gonna do a webinar on this because like this is the spots that i've been struggling like especially live where i'm up normally against like they overfold the pre-flop they probably overfold the flop and like these are the spots that i'm like huh. just really struggling with in live is like deeper stack turn it's like decent betting amount of betting still with the like we're only playing with like a one spr so yeah, so if when we I wouldn't have bet this we, big either. It's like half pot. I wouldn't have really chosen. Do we check Jan this if we checked it? And they bet? No, I, I so. doubt so. I doubt it. Like it's probably not. I don't I think you normally check that. raise jam a hand that can like just be drawing dead. Huh. I agree. Eh, that, probably with the spade, I'm like guessing. Can you go with the jacks? Is it with a spade that's jamming? <laughs> yeah, yep. it's only with the spade. For value? Yeah, we have to bet. Um, I don't think we get to go that big though. Maybe mixes. He's got. I'd I'd go like sixteen. Sixteen. With this hand, I like sixteen. No, no you're it's right. is big. Value. I would go that size. I don't know. Like that jack big. of spades in my hand. But, now I'm uh, in hell. This is. Is that fold? Probably. I, I mean, we, it'd be better to call with tens. Way. You want to block the flip? It's probably better to call with ace of spades, queen, or something, or ace queen with the spade than it pocket, is. Pocket jack with the jack of spades, you call? Absolutely. More so, yeah, than this one. Yeah. You want to have a spade <laughs> blocker or maybe. Mm -hmm. Like tens are a lot better. Like, they, you want to block like the slow played hands on the turn. It's like 10 8, locking 10 8 is more valuable. Look at the ace queen call. Uh, with a, that's not just spades, right? Um, I don't know. He has, he has it on full weight. So let's see. Look at the ace queen. It's just a flush. That is the flush. That suited. Yeah, it's so low frequency. I can't even tell which, <laughs> which is jamming. Hearts are calling. Yeah, Songs are losing piles. Yeah, it's just spades. Like hearts would be the worst one because you know, that's kind of a cool bluff. Oh, uh, he got us again. His color screwed me up too. That was actually really cool. Can you Wait, was that the seven seven six nine yeah. board with the spades? Yeah, he was just blocking the straight. That's actually pretty like that is a that bluff. is a great bluff. Like it makes a lot of sense because you're unblocking. That's not the hands that we're did he bluffing have the, with. Um, did he have the eight of spades? I guess it's fairly irrelevant. No, cause like most of our flushes are probably jamming anyways. Like, go back. <clears throat> uh, can we, you saw that hand up. I just want to see what the. No, uh, it was, it's the wrong board. Yeah, it's the wrong board. Yeah, this one. Uh, Go to the river for in position. Or like, actually go to our strategy on the river. Yes, sir. Um, this is the turn. Yeah, call. Go back to check. It was check, check, turn. Yeah, it was check, check. And it was like a six of hearts. Yeah, six of hearts. Six of hearts. So like, <clears throat> go to filters. So like the, the like bet small range is like full houses a little bit, like nines and then like top pair, nine X and some over pairs. I mean, it's basically like a pair of nines or like an over pair. So like eights, like identifying the eights or a bluff catcher there is, you know, whatever. It's not that difficult, I guess. Um, but then go to bet 16. I always like to see what hands that. Oh, my man. 35% of the range. Wow. I mean, like. Well, a lot of that is if you look at trips are better, which is and over pairs are shoving because those are all they beat the value range. Like it's just a pair of nines and some slow plays. So if you look at that, it's not like this. Just shows you like how it is difficult to um, 
bet very thinly here because we're beat a lot. So then you see like a lot of the bluffs come from like under pairs. So like mm -hmm. pocket sixes, eights, oh, no six is a full house. So it's like eights. That's it. Fives. Yeah. Bit, but... So it's just eights. Okay. So and they then... checked a ton of flushes on the turn. Yeah, which is not surprising. Like in position, it's like a one point three SPR. Like that well, tends maybe to not. happen. It's the weight. Then like it's a lot of ace high and king high hands. So like I'm assuming they're mostly with the spade. Like go to king queen off. Yeah, I mean they have to have a spade. The offsuit ones have to have a spade. Or, like ace jack. I'm assuming like you could have it without a spade. Yeah, like having the jack spades sometimes is better here than the ace. That makes sense. Like ace queen suited. It's just are they, like ace eight suited, ace five suited. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, Range bet small. <clears throat> this sounds gonna check some, but yeah. Pretty good one to barrel blocking ace queen ace jack. Uh, what are we at? Like two SPR. We ever probably even trade? like more the short free bet. Oh yeah, like two SPR, so like seventy five percent of the pot, which is like what almost it's between seventeen and twenty five. What Some size here. does Ace King pick here? I think it picks seventeen. It's like between seventeen and twenty five, probably. Yeah. It's like like whatever the geometric sizing is. Yeah. Sure. And then we just give up or will we block? No, check and cry when he jams. <laughs> cry when he jams. <laughs> I'm folding. You got a call. I mean, in practice, I'm folding. Um, like, this is the exact spot where, like, we I, might every I might fold. Eight. Like, I'm probably folding, like, Ace King in person here a lot. Okay. Like, okay. I'm not, like, blocking Ace Queen and Kings. Can we, I, I just want to, Go back to the turn strategy. Bold and nice. Yeah, are you always going geometric, Matt? I mean, that's just how I simplify. I would just have a geometric sizing. Like it's like the solver basically has one size here. Fifty-five yeah. percent, almost every time. So you're folding ace king, you say? Like in reality, yeah. Which is just one of the spots, like two pairs. Like what's like. I want to see where the solver is drawing its bluffs from. Well, hold on. Can you just go back to the turn? I still want to look at the turn strategy. Like, it's just ace king, ace queen. Again, it's like high check, and then it's queen jack's really good. Like, I'm assuming queen jack of clubs. But yeah, it's still mostly diamonds. Jack 10 is the one blocking. Well, jack 10 has equity. Sure. Can you? What about when we can you face a check on the, like we check and then I want to face like a geometric sizing on the turn? We check the flop? No, no, on the turn. And have them bet 16. Sure. So I'm guessing like obviously ace x calls. Jackson tens folding makes sense. Like we just play call fold. Makes some sense. And then on the river, like, I just want to see, like, where these, like, like, it's just, like, in reality, like, the humans has to turn, like, I don't know, I just want to see where they're turning their bluffs from. So, uh, actually, let's go back to the hand before you look it up. So, what's the value range for the hijack, and what's the bluff range? Like, what's the worst hand do you think the, hi the hijack <laughs> value best? We're, we're smoked by the value range, like. It's not good. Like yeah. he's not he's not just blasting off with ace ten here, you know. Well, like what you're ace. saying, Matt, is if the river was a deuce, it would be a lot easier to call because it's a lot easier for him to find bluffs. Whereas a queen completes a lot of stuff, so it's easier um, to have that value. This stuff, this spot, it's a little different because like the queen doesn't really complete anything. Okay. Uh, it's more so like the flop is very dry. So like a lot of people are folding queen jack of hearts on the flop and stuff. So it's like basically like five, six suited. And then like 
all the bluffs have to come from like pairs here. So like the bluffs on this river, I think have to come from eight, seven suited, five, four suited, <clears throat> obviously like six, five suited. Diamonds, right? Like nine X. Mostly diamonds or random? Like suited? diamonds need a bluff. Yeah. Like diamonds would bluff from the hijack some, but like they're not going to have... So like it's really difficult for a lot of like humans to find those bluffs because they're not really natural bluffs. So this is like a similar spot where it's just because the ranges have gotten so tight and there's just not a lot of natural floats. And you so, can have any two pairs. And then like I don't even know. Like, have like, 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 like Ace saw sevens and fours and in position probably jam. The imposition probably has some ace king for sure. Um, like, I don't know if in position, what the in position does with ace jack, like what does in position do with ace jack? Can you go back to the river here? So, um, can you put it? So it's, er, so ace jacks, like nothing indifferent based That's on the flight. Bottom. Yeah, but like it's not worth like a ton. Like it, it really wants to bluff the diamonds. Well, it's, well, value it's not bluff. It's value. But if you look at like the EV well, of murky, like, I guess. I if you look at like the EV of like all in and check, it's like very, very, very little. Like 0. 0.3 into a pot of 68. Like it's very thin. Um, versus go to ace like queen, for example. Like the EV between check and all in is massive. Yeah. Look at Ace King. Like I'm I'm curious just how thin the value, like Ace King, like you see, like there's a different decent amount of EV and all in versus check. There's even a lot of EV. So like Ace Jack is like that's why I was saying Ace Jack, I didn't know. Like, can you well um go it gets, to the filters? It, I want to see like get, how often they actually have these sets. Like it it also gets a little more interesting. Like you were talking about, like if the field is ICM adjusted at all. Like that ace jack is going to behave differently, right? Yeah, like it'd probably it'd be a pure check for a hundred percent. Um, so like it's a lot of sets and it's a lot of two pair. <clears throat> so like that's not spread. There's not much top pair here in the value range, but like so where like if you look at where the bluffs come from, it's like um so it's jack ten suited, ten eight suited, and six five suited. So like they had to have called the flop with 10-8 suited, which like I would have, but I don't know if a lot of people would like, I don't know if I call Jack 10 suited enough here on the flop. Like I would have found 10-8 before that, like, um, and then go to the low pairs. Like it's gotta be like seven, six, fives, threes. So it's like, these are all bluffs that potentially like they could have 0% of them. Yeah, they're like, not supposed to continue very much against the, the like line, people so. might fold deuces and threes on the flop. They might fold fives and sixes on the flop. They might fold 10 8 suited and jack 10 suited on the flop. So like the only real natural bluff that's like everyone probably has a hundred percent of the time is like six five suited. Right? Yeah, because it's yeah, because of a seven and like seven. what like go all in, like. Ace King's gonna be a call here because they have Ace Jack some. Like, but like the EV, like so the, the EV of that's gonna be like, but go to Ace Jack. Like it's like I think there was some ace ten suited that maybe that was shoving a little bit, like so they're not bluffing enough. So the, the calls on the river are not good. Like there's like a lot of people I might like feel comfortable like just check folding a hundred percent here. But against people like that, that I also like to bluff this spot a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I go kind of crazy here with like some of these like seven sixes and stuff. Like I'm bluffing like seven six suited like on the river here a decent amount. All right, I have time for like one. One more two. or should yeah, we yeah, wrap it up here? One more? Sure. One more. So I like that thing small here because we have the ace of spades. I think there's probably some big bet here. Like yeah. Queens and Kings want to bet big, like bet 11, but like bet five is fine. They're both fine. Bet 11. Uh, I think they're are we betting the everything here? Size. Can you go back? Can we go to the flop? I, the think, I think we're betting range here. Yeah, jack eye boards are really, really good. We're betting anything. 
been quite often. Yeah, like there's not a lot of checking. There's a little bit with like pocket eights that makes sense. Pocket sevens that makes sense. Seven six suited, six five suited makes sense. Guys in seven six and six five only bet with hearts and spades. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Eight seven is a different hand. Want to see something else, sir? No, no. I think uh, the deuce is just going to not change our betting strategy too much. I think we probably double barrel with this just because, you know, <clears throat> his I draws. would barrel any high card here, but not a deuce. Yeah, I'm checking. Um, I'm, I, I wanna, think this I'm, is the hand. Of, it just drops the frequency a little. I'm going to barrel this for sure. I think this is the hand to bet. Uh, actually, yeah, wait, 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 wait. I think it's better to barrel with like the queen of spades or the king of spades because they you want to kind of unblock all their single ace high spades. You know what? Actually, having a 10 here is kind of bad to like. We block some of the floats and stuff, but like we, we, we do block calls like queen 10, king 10, like those hands aren't folding. So this is actually kind of tough. Um, I'm like barrel, it's probably right? better to barrel here with ace 10 with the 10 of spades than ace 10 with the ace of spades. Uh, see, I think it's better to barrel with the ace. The problem is now is you block all the ace of spades, queen, ace of spades, king, ace of spades, 10. I guess there's not that many offsuit aces. Which are going to continue against your bet. So you're kind of like... Uh... No, those hands are folding the turn. Okay. Ace five um, of spades is folding, no? No, I, I was saying ace of spades, like offsuit hands, I was saying. Okay, okay. I was referring to, like... So yeah, it's probably I, better I, to have the ace of spades. Um, I, th I think I still bet here in game. Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably lean towards betting, but... Have a check on a deuce brick. And then let's see if the spade is good or not. I think, I think it's going to be like ace-10 with the ace of spades. It's going to be particularly Yeah, so it wants to have the... Yeah, so I was kind of... The ten of spades is better. Mm -hmm. Like, you just For want the... to unblock the high card spade floats. And then you're going to bluff um, spade rivers, right? Yeah, yeah, of and course. And we are yeah, still just kind of Hold betting on, a, go back, a lot please? of stuff at a low yeah. Yeah. Cool. You're going way too quick on this stuff, <laughs> Louis. <laughs> Uh, I'm just trying to like, I was wondering if we had any jams, but we don't. I thought maybe like King Queen with the King of Spades. You, some you see a little color out of Jack 10 there, like it's a little bit, but not really, right? No, there, I mean, there's 0.4, whatever. Yeah, Ace Jack would have been the hand to do it with. Mm -hmm. All right, you go to the report, the turn strategy across boards. So the hearts are really introducing some big size. Yeah, so just ace, king, queens, where could we fold out those hands? But it's like the deuce is the fourth best card. Like the deuce is better than like the 10 mm -hmm. and all those types of hands. Like the deuce is not necessarily like the brick. Like those are pretty good cards still. It's more the middling cards, like the, you know, the jack, the nine. I guess I underestimated the deuce because he is going to have like some wheelie aces that are going to stick around now, but um, I don't know. I, no, I, I mean, there's only two combinations. It's only, it's, yeah. it has to be spades and hearts. It's, it's just like, you're just trying to fold out all the weak hands that didn't improve. Right. So that makes having a 10 kind of bad. So the her heuristic I've learned today is as the turn aggressor, when we get the brick, we still barrel a lot of the same hands at a slightly lower frequency, it seems like. Yeah, it's probably like okay. somewhat reasonable. It's like we, both players have a lot of trash that didn't improve, so. Mm -hmm. I think this, say we check turn and we face a piece of fold. I'm going to release. Yeah, bang and chip. Okay. Uh, okay. Can All right, but hey, thanks a lot, Matt. It was a really, mm -hmm. really great session. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because <laughs> you didn't, you, you cut him off, didn't let him look at the river. <laughs> yeah, Goodbye. it's all good. Yeah. I was just looking at what, like, on the turn, what we would actually continue with. Okay. Um, we can do that. <laughs> All 
So, like, if I had a suggestion with you guys, for you guys, I would say, we're like, we're going through these drills, which I think are really, really valuable. It's mm -hmm. focused just on, like, do I understand the overall strategy reasonably well? Yep. Like, that's, like, basically what your goal is. And so, like, more so than, like, what you do with the hand, just try to guess first before you even say what you do with your hand. And this is how I play poker, too. I, I always say, well, what is my overall strategy look like here? Like, how much raising do I want to do? How much calling do I want to do? Like, et cetera, those, that type of stuff. And just, you know, check it to make sure that, like, you are, you know, um, very, like, that you're have a reasonable idea of the overall strategy. And if you don't, that's like an area to study. So like when you're doing these drills, it's more of also about like identifying areas to study more in depth rather than um, sometimes that's more valuable than getting it right. The other thing that I think is really, really important when you're doing these is when you get like answers from it where it's like fold this hand, um, look at very similar hands because you get a lot of noise sometimes and like it's really hard to know where people are bluffing for so we had like the nine six versus nine seven earlier with like on nine five three deuce and like nine six called nine seven raised some but like look at similar hands to see and like same with like bluff catchers and stuff like that like look at very similar hands to see if there's like noise going on because a lot of times there's a lot of noise and um you know, if it's picking one combo and then not picking the other combo type of stuff, like be kind of cautious and like looking um, for that type of stuff. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it sure does. It does, Matt. Uh, and, like, don't what? worry. Don't worry if like you said raise king eight and it raises king nine and calls with king eight. Like, it's not like that's not like what you should be worried about. Like, it's what's our general like and think about like blocks like how do we play our top pair of hands here you know how do we play this type of hand class here like that's the like the real type of stuff that you want to really be focusing on awesome right. hey well, thank thanks you, a uh, lot matt yeah. yeah i really appreciate you thanks. taking your time out today and uh coming to our study session we all do. yeah thanks good. a lot matt yep all right have a good one guys good luck out there matt thank you